Welcome to the Fantasy Audiobook. Marvel. My first trading partner is Grey Wolf. Build Warframe at the beginning. Chapter 41. Because the battle yesterday took place in the evening, and Tony used his connections to suppress the incident after returning home, the battle between John by Manor and the mutants was not reported by any major newspapers, and there was no news about the battle on the internet. On one hand, there is Tony's relationship, and on the other hand, Zhang Bai uses the intelligence system in the magnetic armor to connect to the network and clear those posts about what happened in the manor. Although Hydra and other major organizations know about it, they will not expose it. They wished that as few people knew about it as possible. In the eyes of these organizations, Zhang Bai's information was mediocre, but his silver white armor and the laser attack launched in the manor were enough to show that he was a technological genius and his scientific research ability was not weak. This is just what Zhang Bai showed. They don't know why the mutants clashed with Zhang Bai, but this doesn't prevent them from approaching Zhang Bai. Iron Man's armor alone is terrifying enough, and now there is an even more powerful armor. Still without connections and strength, these organizations will naturally not let go of this opportunity easily, and they are all ready to contact them first. Of course, they all have the worst plan, if they can't get it, they won't let other organizations get it. In their eyes, Zhang Bai without armor is almost no threat. Zhang Bai, who drove out of the manor alone, soon found that there were many unfamiliar vehicles following him. He smiled disdainfully and drove towards the shopping mall. When Zhang Bai arrived at the shopping mall, the black widow Natasha also learned the news and prepared to approach Zhang Bai in the mall. Entering the mall, he walked towards the jewelry store, looking at the colorful, gorgeous and exquisite jewelry. He chose a red gem necklace worth nearly 10 million US dollars and prepared to trade it to Grey Wolf as a reward for this transaction. The red gem just happened to correspond to the name of Red Wolf. In addition, its exquisite workmanship and its color are like a blazing flame, full of vivid and vigorous vitality. Its unique red color makes people unable to resist its seductive charm. Thinking of Wanda and Lorna at home, I chose two gemstone bracelets. The total cost was 15 million US dollars. After the clerk packed it, he left the jewelry store directly. He went to a digital product store and bought some game consoles and game cards for Pietro before leaving with his things. Just as he was walking towards the underground parking lot, he saw a familiar face. A seductive beauty with long red hair, wearing an OL professional suit that highlighted her plump figure, black stockings wrapped around her slender legs, and a pair of exquisite black high heels, walking towards him. Zhang Bai narrowed his eyes slightly at the familiar face. He was very familiar with the person in front of him. It was the black widow, Natasha Romanoff. She was also an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. He had no doubt that the black widow was here for him. However, seeing that the other party's eyes did not look at him at all, he laughed secretly in his heart. He could only say that she was worthy of being the Black Widow, with such superb acting skills. He wanted to see what the Black Widow was going to do, so he pretended not to notice the other party and walked forward. Gotta, when Natasha passed by Zhang Bai, the heel of her high heels broke and she fell on Zhang Bai. This surprised Zhang Bai, but he pretended to be normal and supported her. At the same time, he also felt the softness of her plump body when she fell on him. Ma'am, are you okay? Sorry, I think I sprained my ankle. I'm really sorry. It's okay, it looks a little serious, I'll call 911 for you. No, no, I can just take a rest. Don't bother, I still need to go to the company. Zhang Bai pretended to look at Natasha anxiously. After seeing the other party asking him, Natasha also started to act. Seeing Natasha acting there, he laughed secretly in his heart. If he didn't know Natasha's true face, he might have been fooled by the other party. A beautiful woman looks so pitiful that any man would be unable to resist protecting her. Knowing Natasha's identity, he was just playing along with her. She had been injected with super serum and was probably in her 70s or 80s. It would be a miracle if she got hurt because of the broken heel of her high heels. Oh, it's okay. I've called 911 for you. I'll help you sit on the chair next to you. You can just wait here for 911 to arrive. It's just an ankle injury. You can just apply some medicine. It won't delay your trip to the company. I have something else to do, so I'll leave first. Ah, well, okay, thank you. At this time, 
Zhang Bai suddenly spoke to the other party with a slightly anxious tone, and then threw her on a chair and left. Zhang Bai's sudden change made Natasha a little confused. That was because Zhang Bai had just seen the notification of the artificial intelligence on the watch. Several people attacked the manor. In this situation, he had no intention of continuing to act with Natasha, so he just got up and left. After arriving at the underground parking lot, Zhang Bai stepped on the accelerator and drove towards his manor. At the high speed of the car, he quickly returned to the manor. Then he saw five corpses at the door of the villa. Martin was contacting his connections to deal with these corpses. In this world, there is the Continental Hotel, and naturally there are scavengers, who are people who specialize in dealing with corpses and cleaning up after the war, but every time they need the gold coins of the Continental Hotel. Ding. Boss, there is a locator and a bug in your car. I see. After leaving the car, the artificial intelligence sent another message. Zhang Bai was not surprised at all after learning that his car was equipped with a locator and a bug. He had been in the mall for a while, and both SHIELD and other organizations had enough time to install locators and bugs. Thinking of Natasha's appearance, Zhang Bai was more inclined to believe that it was installed by SHIELD. Given Nick Fury's personality of wanting to control everything in his own hands, it was not surprising that he would do such a thing. Following the prompts of the artificial intelligence, Zhang Bai quickly dismantled the four locators and two eavesdropping devices. Then he came in front of Martin and looked at him with a very ugly expression. Master, I don't know what organization the other party is, but judging from their skills, they are all people who have undergone systematic training, and they are all death warriors. If they are crippled by me, they will just bite off the poison hidden in their teeth. Have they undergone systematic training? Do they have any special tattoos or marks on their bodies? No, nothing, but their weapons are the ones that the military is currently using in the army. I see. Are Wanda and the others okay? It's okay. We were discovered as soon as they entered the manor. The moment my watch notified me, I rushed out and knocked them all down. But their target didn't seem to be Wanda and the others. They seemed to be looking for something. Could they be looking for your laboratory, young master? Maybe they want to get your armor. It's possible. Give them more money to repair the manor quickly. Okay, I'll make arrangements right away. Seeing Zhang Bai's eyes looking at him, Martin opened his mouth and told him everything he knew. As far as he knew, he didn't know what organization this person was from. After systematic training, the weapons he used were still weapons in service in the U.S. Army, although both clues pointed to the U.S. military. But if the other party wanted the armor, they didn't have to break into the manor like this, they could just mobilize the army to rob it. And there was no poison in the teeth of the American soldiers. After listening to what Martin said, he already had some guesses in his mind. That is Hydra. After systematic training, Hydra has its own base and can systematically train soldiers. In addition, the other party has many spies and undercovers in the middle and high-level positions in the United States. It is not difficult to get the most advanced weapons. Although the other party had no tattoos or marks on his body, according to Zhang Bai's understanding of Hydra, he should be a member of Hydra. Not every soldier is qualified to have the Hydra logo tattooed on him, otherwise if a soldier dies, wouldn't it be directly exposed? These middle and high-level Hydra officials are not that stupid. Looking at the manor being repaired around him, Zhang Bai asked Martin to pay more money to have them repair it faster. The more people there are in the manor, the more unsafe it is. After the repair is completed, he still needs to remove some of the garbage left by the other party. He doesn't believe that these people have not installed hidden cameras and eavesdropping devices in the manor. On the other side, Natasha also learned from other agents after Zhang Bai left that the manor was attacked, so Zhang Bai rushed back. This was also the reason why her contact failed. Even though she was a little angry, she had no choice but to continue looking for opportunities. Wanda, this ruby bracelet is for you. Lorna, this emerald bracelet is for you. Pietro, you are not suitable to wear this, so I bought you a lot of game consoles and game cards. Wow, it looks great. Thank you Zhang Bai. I love the color. There are new games to play, really. Thank you Zhang Bai. As soon as they entered the villa, they handed the ruby bracelet and emerald bracelet to Wanda and Lorna, and gave the purchased game console and game cards to Pietro. Wanda and Lorna were very surprised when they saw the bracelets in their hands, 
and Pietro jumped up with joy and disappeared into the living room with the game console and game cards. Instead, Wanda and Luna jumped up and kissed Zhang Bai on the face. Their little faces turned red instantly. They didn't dare to look at Zhang Bai and ran straight to their bedrooms. Seeing the two people fleeing in panic, he smiled slightly and took the ruby necklace he bought for Grey Wolf into his room. Trade it to Grey Wolf through the system. Grey Wolf in the Wolf Castle immediately agreed to Zhang Bai's deal, and then a beautiful gift box appeared in his hand. Slowly opening it, you will see a ruby necklace. The ruby in the middle is much larger than the other rubies. This ruby is bright and colorful, blooming like a blooming flower. It contains rich energy and unique magnetic field, which can give the wearer positive psychological hints and bring a happy mood. On Valentine's Day or other special occasions, this ruby necklace is the perfect gift to express love. Big Bad Wolf was very satisfied with the deal and had a feeling that his wife would like it. Grey Wolf, thank you, I am very satisfied. I think my wife will like this gift. Zhang Bai, you're welcome, as long as you're satisfied. Ruby, with its bright and charming red color, is widely regarded as a symbol of love and passion. It represents the beauty, eternity and loyalty of love, and is therefore known as the stone of love. The color of ruby symbolizes fiery passion, and is a token of love that couples can give to each other to express their love. It is enough to express your love for red wolf. Grey wolf, thank you. Grey wolf saw that the ruby was known as the stone of love, and he was very happy in his heart, thinking of the relationship between himself and his wife. He inadvertently showed a satisfied and happy smile. After waking up, he took the gift box and walked to the bedroom, ready to give this gift to Red Wolf. After trading the ruby necklace to Big Bad Wolf, Zhang Bai discovered that Big Bad Wolf's friendliness towards him increased a lot, reaching 90%. It can be said that Big Bad Wolf now regards him as a close friend. The ruby necklace is a big part of the reason why it can reach 90%. The last 10% is also the most difficult, but Zhang Bai is not in a hurry. Sooner or later, he will get 100% friendliness from Grey Wolf, and then he can invite Grey Wolf to come here to help him. He can also go to the green grassland to see his childhood. I came to the living room and turned on the TV to check the news of the past few days. According to our report, Stark Industries' stock price has once again reached a new high, surpassing all previous values. Another congressman proposed a bill to sanction and record mutants, but the Supreme Council did not pass it. I am currently in Sakura country. Just now, Sakura was hit by another earthquake. No, what is this? Oh my god, a huge monster appeared in the nuclear power plant of Sakura. I swear I have never seen such a big creature. Oh my god. This monster is destroying the nuclear bomb station. If the nuclear energy flows into the sea, it will cause the death of countless marine life. No, it is devouring nuclear energy. Oh my god, this monster is actually devouring nuclear energy. This giant creature that looks like a marine iguana is constantly destroying nuclear power plants, and Sakura hasn't taken any action yet. Will this monster come ashore? Let's get closer and watch. Several channels were still broadcasting news from the United States, most of which were related to Tony, either Stark Industries or the topic of Iron Man. However, there were also reports about mutants. Just when Zhang Bai switched to the international channel, suddenly, a huge monster appeared next to a nuclear power plant in Sakura country and began to destroy the nuclear power plant and devour nuclear energy. Others may not know, but Zhang Bai knows who this person is. He has. This is Godzilla, the king of monsters. He can eat nuclear energy, and even nuclear bombs can't threaten him. Height, 50 meters, weight, 2 tons. He also has a signature skill, atomic breath. He can even evolve into Crimson Godzilla, which is a completely terrifying existence. There is not only Crimson Godzilla, but also Mini Godzilla, Godzilla 2, Sentinel Godzilla, B Godzilla, Space Godzilla, King Godzilla, and other forms. I didn't expect it to appear after Tony announced that he was Iron Man. This further confirmed Zhang Bai's original guess, that is, Tony's announcement that he was Iron Man was the beginning of the era of superheroes in the entire Marvel world. However, Zhang Bai felt inexplicably relieved when he saw Godzilla destroying the Sakura nuclear power plant. Shield, Triskelion Building Nick Fury looked at the video on the tablet in his hand. 
It was the video of Godzilla destroying the nuclear power plant in Sakura country, and Godzilla devouring nuclear energy. Looking at this giant monster, Nick Fury was completely sick. He could never have imagined that there was such a terrifying monster on Earth. Once it wants to destroy a city, the damage it causes will be an incalculable number. A city will not last long in the hands of this giant monster before it is destroyed. Nick Fury began to think about the response plan and thought of the two people in his mind. He gradually felt relieved and took out a document from the drawer with a determined look in his eyes. It was becoming more and more necessary to form this super team. The cover of the document had the words, Avengers, written on it. Hill, keep an eye on this monster. I need to know all its movements. Yes, Director, Monarch Organization. William Bill Landa looked at the giant monster in the video with surprise and enthusiasm in his eyes. He is the founder of the Monarch Organization. The Monarch Organization is one of the most mysterious organizations in the world. It specializes in searching for evidence of the existence of ancient monsters in mythology, and also to protect humans and maintain world peace. He had been searching for the existence of the ancient giant beasts and titan beasts for a long time. Based on many clues, he could confirm the existence of these beasts, but he only knew about them through deduction and simulation. He had never actually seen a giant beast. Now, suddenly there was one in front of him, attacking the nuclear power plant in Sakura country directly. This made him very happy and he wanted to study this giant beast very much. Soon he began to order his men to go to Sakura country to observe the giant beast's every move. He even mobilized satellites to conduct comprehensive surveillance of the giant beast. He wanted to know all the movements of the giant beast, so as to find out the locations of other giant beasts and the location of the legendary center of the earth. Not only S.H.I.E.L.D. and Monarch are paying attention to this giant beast, but also Hydra, Wakanda, Inhumans, Red House, Mutants, SWORD, S.H.I.E.L.D. and many other organizations are paying attention to this huge beast. Many biological companies are also paying attention, especially Norman Osborn who wants to cure his family's disease. Many crazy Hydras even want to control this behemoth to achieve the goal of ruling the world. At this time, a huge wave suddenly appeared in New York Harbor. The huge wave hit the New York Harbor fiercely, destroying countless ships, cargoes and buildings, and causing countless casualties. New York Harbor is the largest seaport in the United States and one of the largest seaports in the world. It is located at the mouth of the Hudson River in the northeastern United States, facing the Atlantic Ocean to the east. In 1980, the throughput reached 1.6 million tons, and it has been above 1 million tons for many years. On average, more than 4,000 ships enter and leave every year. It is also the name of a river. A huge titan monster emerged from the sea and landed in New York Harbor. Its size was no less than that of Godzilla. However, it was a combination of a scorpion and a locust. After landing in New York Harbor, the titan monster began to move towards the center of New York City. All the buildings along the way were destroyed. The sudden appearance of the monster plunged the whole of New York into chaos. Even Nick Fury did not expect that a monster would land in New York. New York has a population of nearly 15 million. If this monster enters the city center, I am afraid that half of them will be killed or injured. Even Zhang Bai was very surprised that a titan monster would land in New York. Looking at the other party's appearance, he knew that the other party was the titan monster, Abaddon, a combination of scorpion and locust. Its size was not much smaller than the current Godzilla, but its combat power was not as good as Godzilla. But it is not something New York can resist now. He has already started to consider whether to flee. If a nuclear bomb is released, it may kill Abaddon, but the whole of New York will also be destroyed. I just don't know if the government will be so crazy as to launch a nuclear bomb. Zhang, did you see that? What should we do now? The monster is heading towards the center of New York City. Of course he's running away. Do you want to stop him? To be honest, if you're hit by his tail, you'll definitely die. I advise you not to be impulsive, Tony. This, but there are still many people in New York City, I want to save them. Stop it, Tony. This is a titan monster. It's hard to destroy it unless you use nuclear weapons. When you go up to fight with the opponent, the government and the military may directly launch a nuclear bomb here. Listen to me, run away. Given the nature of these politicians, it's possible, but. Oh my god, 
someone rushed over. He stopped the monster from moving forward. At this time, Tony suddenly called and asked Zhang Bai what to do now. After all, the giant beast was heading towards the center of New York and would arrive in Manhattan soon. Hearing Tony's words, Zhang Bai told him to run away without hesitation, but hearing Tony's hesitant tone. Tony was full of surprise and suspicion and wanted to stop Abaddon. He persuaded Tony speechlessly. Although Tony's iron armor was indeed powerful now, it was still not enough to fight against Abaddon. As long as Tony was hit by Abaddon, he would die on the spot. So Zhang Bai advised Tony not to be impulsive and it would be right to run away with him. He also told Tony that the government might launch a nuclear bomb soon. In Zhang Bai's memory, the cheetah invaded in the timeline, and there was hope to repel the cheetah, but the government still chose to launch a nuclear bomb. Now that Abaddon has landed in New York, he has no doubt that the American government will launch a nuclear bomb. They don't care about the lives of the people. Tony heard Zhang Bai's words and recalled his impression of the government. It seemed that this was indeed what they would do, but the next moment he looked at the screen and exclaimed. In the footage from their own satellite, a man flew up from nowhere and rushed towards the monster, and punched it to stop it from moving forward. After hearing Tony's words, Zhang Bai also looked at the live broadcast on TV. As for where the live broadcast came from. Of course, it was those fearless reporters from New York newspapers who were broadcasting it live. Then Zhang Bai also saw the scene Tony had just described, his eyes narrowed slightly, and he began to think about who this man was and why he had the strength to repel the behemoth. Just ten minutes ago, Nick Fury personally took a Quincy fighter to a special location to invite the man who stopped the behemoth. His name is Robert Reynolds. Perhaps many people are not familiar with him. He has another name code, which is, Sentinel. The Sentry, whose real name is Robert Reynolds, was originally a drug addict. He broke into a professor's laboratory to get drugs and accidentally drank the secret formula invented by the professor. He gained powerful abilities, but this energy also created a negative personality in Robert, namely nothingness. The Sentinel's strength is terrifying, and he even possesses the power of a million stars. This is equivalent to the energy of a million exploding stars. Because of his evil personality, he is constantly fighting against the Void in order to avoid losing control. He is also one of Nick Fury's trump cards to protect the Earth. The Sentinel is set to have unlimited potential, but because of the existence of the Void, he cannot continue to grow. The Void is always trying to occupy his body, which is why Nick Fury dare not easily invite him. The Sentinel is the most powerful when he is stable. He can exert his full strength. He can even destroy the Earth in an instant. For this reason, Nick Fury constantly helps the Sentinel resist his nihilistic personality. Even the Ancient One finds his situation very difficult. After Abaddon landed in New York, Nick Fury had no choice but to ask this powerful and unstable existence to move, otherwise the whole of New York would be destroyed by the monster. Knowing the seriousness of the matter, the Sentinel did not hesitate, even if he was fighting against nothingness, he could still exert his impressive combat power. So he agreed to take action to deal with the monster, and instantly appeared in front of the monster. Then, this was what Tony and Zhang Bai saw. Nick Fury finally breathed a sigh of relief when he saw the Sentinel take action, but the speculation in his heart made him tense again. One appeared at the Sakura nuclear power plant, and another one appeared here. It is very likely that there are more of these monsters. This makes Nick Fury more determined to form the Avengers. On the other side, Zhang Bai watched the white man who was constantly attacking the giant beast on TV, and he had some guesses in his mind that the other party's ability seemed a bit similar to Superman. In Marvel, the Sentinel was the character most similar to Superman, and the other party was likely the Sentinel with the power of a million stars. He didn't expect that even the Sentinel would appear. It seems that this world is not just a movie world or a comic world. Seeing the Sentinel punch Abaddon and send him flying, Zhang Bai's heart trembled at the huge force. He was indeed a Sentinel with the power of millions of stars. A golden laser shot out from his eyes, blasting Abaddon away again. As his energy continued to increase, Abaddon's body was soon cut by the Sentinel with a deep wound. However, Abaddon did not die just like that, because the cut was not very far. Its terrifying self-healing ability began to heal its body, and green blood gushed out from the wound. Abaddon retreated while recovering, wanting to leave here and return to the sea. 
but the sentinel would not let it escape. Boom. Just as the sentinel attacked Abaddon again, a crimson energy attack suddenly shot out from the sea, hitting the sentinel. Taking this opportunity, Abaddon instantly retreated into the sea and left. When the crimson energy attack disappeared, the sentinel also lost the position of the titan beast just now. Even his eyes could not see the position of the monster after it entered the sea. His brows slightly frowned, and without much thought, he disappeared directly into the air. The next time had nothing to do with him, but there was still a lot of blood left by Abaddon on the ground. Shield appeared at the first moment and began collecting monster blood. The government and the military naturally would not let Shield take all of it away, and even many biological companies joined in. Sakura Country. Boom, boom, roar. At this moment, the Sakura Country is not as lucky as New York. With the protection of the power of millions of stars, the Sakura government sent fighter jets to attack Godzilla. The ground forces even drove tanks, missile launchers and a series of heavy artillery to attack Godzilla. Godzilla, who was attacked, immediately began to fight back. With a sweep of his tail, he destroyed a large number of ground troops and even crushed the tanks into discus. The soldiers inside turned into blood plasma. Although the fighter jets could rely on their own speed to circle around Godzilla and interfere with it. But Godzilla was huge, and he used his tail to predict the direction of the fighter's flight, destroying many fighters directly. With a roar, a special magnetic field spread along with the sound, causing a large number of electronic equipment to become unusable, and many fighters directly lost power and fell to the ground. The Sakura Kingdom's navy began to attack Godzilla, and in the aircraft carrier not far away, they received instructions from the Sakura Emperor and the Prime Minister, authorizing them to launch nuclear weapons. Although they knew that this monster could absorb and devour nuclear energy, the top leaders of the Sakura Kingdom did not think that this monster could withstand the explosion of a nuclear bomb. Boom! Various missiles were launched and attacked in the direction of Godzilla. A city not far from the nuclear power plant was in complete chaos. The Sakura people fled frantically. Of course, there were also some Sakura people who were not afraid of death and went to a place not far from the nuclear power plant to take pictures. Godzilla, who was annoyed by these missiles, began to walk towards the city. With its huge body, every step it takes will cause the earth to shake. As an island country, it is estimated that the land area of Sakura's homeland has been greatly reduced after suffering the devastation from Godzilla. The land of Sakura is sinking every year. When Godzilla left the nuclear power plant and headed for the nearest city, the emperor and prime minister of Sakura ordered the navy aircraft carrier to launch nuclear weapons to destroy the monster. Even if it might affect the city, it would not matter. As the nuclear missile silo of the aircraft carrier was opened, a huge nuclear bomb slowly rose. As the nuclear bomb rose, it locked onto the target and rushed towards Godzilla's position. It continued to accelerate in the process and hit Godzilla after 30 seconds. All countries were stunned by this scene. No one expected that Sakura would drop a nuclear bomb on their own land. Boom! A mushroom cloud rose up. Just as the top leaders of Sakura and other countries were nervously looking at the giant beast in the mushroom cloud, only Zhongbai looked at Sakura with disdain. A nuclear bomb can't kill Godzilla, it will make him stronger and stronger. Wait for the mushroom cloud to dissipate. Everyone saw that the giant beast was standing there intact. Everything around it was destroyed by the nuclear bomb just now. Godzilla was very excited and began to absorb the nuclear energy from the nuclear bomb explosion. As it absorbed it, it soon realized that it needed to sleep to consume the nuclear energy. And to achieve the purpose of strengthening himself, Godzilla then turned around and walked towards the nuclear power plant, and soon entered the sea, and quickly disappeared from the radar detection of the Sakura aircraft carrier. Now all countries are still shocked by the fact that the monster was hit by a nuclear bomb without any damage. This also made many organizations more determined to control and study this giant beast. The monarch organization began to mobilize its own power to obtain the monster blood in the hands of S.H.I.E.L.D. Even Hydra began to prepare research equipment. 80% of the entire shield are their people, so it is not too easy for them to get monster blood. In addition, many American chables and families have begun to use their power and connections to put pressure on the American government, hoping to obtain monster blood for research. You know, the monsters injured by the sentinels bleed a lot, so it is impossible for shield to keep all the blood. 
At the same time, the Sentinels have also entered the eyes of various countries and major organizations. Hydra and other organizations have begun to investigate everything about the Sentinels. If we can get the other parties' genes and study their abilities, then any plan and purpose can be easily achieved, and some organizations such as Hydra can take action. However, Nick Fury had long deleted the Sentinels' information from the American database, and even S.H.I.E.L.D. did not have any information about the Sentinel. Because the Sentinel was powerful and unstable, Nick Fury was afraid that any organization would interfere with the Sentinel or control the Sentinel through some means. He didn't tell anyone about the existence of the Sentinel, not even his assistants Hill and Coulson, not even Hawkeye and Black Widow whom he trusted. He went to see the Sentinel alone, and the confidentiality was even more secretive than when he built a safe house. Zhang Bai felt a great sense of crisis. Now that the Sentinel actually existed in this world, could the other characters also be characters in the comics? Would they also have stronger powers? This made Zhang Bai even more eager for powerful power. At Xavier's school for gifted youngsters, Charles began to think after seeing the monsters appearing in Sakura Country in New York. He felt that this was an opportunity, an opportunity to make the mutants situation better. In the future, these monsters will definitely become the primary target of all countries. Because they are too powerful and will attack cities recklessly, Charles wants to use these monsters to bring a sense of crisis to the American government so that mutants and humans can coexist peacefully. Then naturally he has to let the government and ordinary people know that mutants will protect them. By making mutants heroes, like Iron Man, the status of mutants in society will naturally rise. At least it will make humans stop hating and rejecting mutants, but how to do it specifically is still under discussion. Professor, Jean has woken up, Scott and Aurora are in stable condition, but Scott's leg needs some time to recover. That's good. Alas, I should have reminded them. But, Professor, is it really safe to give those genes to the other party? They contain Eric's genes. Don't worry. Over the years, has anyone successfully researched our genes? Even you don't have any clues now. Many organizations have obtained Eric's genes, but they have never figured out anything. Even if he gets them, he won't be able to figure out anything. Besides, it was Scott who was impulsive this time, and the fault is ours. Mutants can't cause any more trouble now, otherwise when the government's highest meeting passes that bill, our situation will become even more difficult. In addition, there is Tony Stark next to us, and I don't need to say much about his influence. Okay, what do you think of those monsters today? I don't know where they come from, but they should be related to the ocean and the center of the earth. Hank, I think this is an opportunity, an opportunity to make the situation of mutants better. I want to make us mutants into superheroes so that ordinary people will no longer reject us. With the example of Iron Man, we should be able to succeed. Professor, do you mean to deal with those monsters? But those monsters are too powerful. It's hard for us to defeat them. You saw the man who repelled the monsters today. We don't need to defeat those monsters. These monsters will be resisted by those powerful beings. We just need to be responsible for rescuing ordinary people. If that's the case, it does make sense. Charles was thinking in the office when he was suddenly stunned. He saw the door of the office was pushed open. Hank walked in from outside and told him the situation of Jean, Scott, and Aurora. But he was a little worried about the genes that were sent out. After hearing Hank's concerns, Charles smiled and explained to Hank without any concern that so many organizations had not succeeded in research for so many years. Even if they handed it over to the other party now, they would not be able to research anything, so Charles was not worried at all, even if Eric's genes were in it. You know, many organizations have obtained his genes, but they still haven't researched anything. Charles told Hank not to worry. He told Hank his idea, which is to turn mutants into superheroes, although the current mutants can't beat those monsters. But they can save ordinary people in cities attacked by monsters, and with a little manipulation of public opinion, there is a high chance of success. But the premise is that the government will not stop it. With the example of Tony Stark here, Charles is still somewhat confident. After listening to Charles's idea, Hank began to think about it and felt that it was somewhat feasible. The specific matters had to wait until Scott and others recovered from their injuries before discussing them. It was impossible to let Charles and Hank alone to carry it out. Soon a week passed, and Zhang Bai's manner was repaired. 
After all the people from the construction company left, they used artificial intelligence to dismantle a whole box of cameras and bugs. Each of them was black technology. After dismantling these cameras and bugs, Zhang Bai started the holographic illusion, making it impossible for people to explore the situation inside from the outside. Zhang Bai hadn't met Natasha in the past week, mainly because he didn't go out much, and Natasha couldn't find a chance to get close to Zhang Bai. During this period, many organizations, chables, families, and countries used formal and informal means to obtain Abaddon's blood and began to conduct crazy research. In addition, the military was eyeing the armor of Zhang Bai and Tony, and some congressmen even directly distributed court leaflets to the two. Because of the congressman's behavior, Zhang Bai's identity as the Silver Man was exposed. The code name given to Zhang Bai on the internet is the Silver Man. Tony has made fun of Zhang Bai more than once. Because Zhang Bai's identity was exposed, Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro were unable to go to school normally. This also made Zhang Bai very upset with the congressman, and at one point he even thought of killing him. As for the court flyer, Zhang Bai didn't care at all, and he didn't even plan to go to the so-called court. He was too lazy to even bother with it. But Tony had to go because of Rhodes. Zhang Bai was even dragged into this, and under Tony's insistence, he finally agreed to attend the so-called hearing. They didn't need to think about the other party's idea, they all wanted the two to hand over the manufacturing technology of the iron armor. Of course, this was only the idea of some government members and military high-ranking officials. Because Tony's connections are strong enough, many congressmen and military generals did not participate in this hearing, but there are still some congressmen and military officers who are unwilling to give up and want to try to get the Iron Man armor. At this moment, Zhang Bai was sitting on the sofa and communicating with Tom. Tom had already made something to exchange with Zhang Bai, but he was very surprised when he saw the bottle of soda in his hand. Tom, this is the thing that can possess those genetic abilities. Looking at Tom on the screen, he asked curiously. Tom nodded and turned around found a piece of paper and a pen from somewhere, and began to write on the paper. When he finished writing, he showed it to Zhang Bai, and it read. Yes, but because of Jerry's interference, the genes in the second layer of the box you gave me were all messed up and cannot be used. So only the genetic abilities of the first layer are available. Jerry again, luckily it's on the second floor, it's okay, let's swap. After reading what Tom wrote, Zhang Bai only felt his blood pressure rising, but fortunately, the second layer was composed of the genes of some ordinary students in Xavier's school for gifted youths, and the first layer was the genes of Charles, Eric, Logan, Scott, Aurora, Jean, John, and Bobby. They are also some genes with outstanding abilities. After hearing Zhang Bai's words, Tom nodded repeatedly, and then chose to trade with Zhang Bai. He took out 50 big fish, a whole piece of cheese, and a lot of snacks from the system space. After clicking to agree, a bottle of red soda appeared in front of Zhang Bai. In front of Tom, there were 50 big fish in boxes, a whole piece of cheese bigger than his head, and a lot of snacks. This time, Tom learned his lesson and traded with Zhang Bai in a small house in the warehouse. This time, he was not discovered by Jerry. Holding his big fish, he looked around for a few times to make sure that Jerry was not there. He took out a sofa from somewhere and lay on it to eat the fish. He even held the cheese next to him, which made Tom very satisfied. What he didn't notice was that there was a little figure not far away drooling at the cheese. He took the soda in his hand and drank it all in one breath. Then he found that his body had a special reaction. He now had Professor X's telepathy, Magneto's magnetic control, Wolverine's self-healing ability, Cyclops' laser ability, Storm's ability to control lightning, Phoenix's telekinesis, Pyro's ability to control fire, and Iceman's ability to control ice. Not only that, he suspected that he did not have mutant genes in his body, because he did not inject genes but drank Tom's special soda. While he did not have mutant abilities, he had superpowers related to mutants. This surprised Zhang Bai very much. Because of the two times of strengthening his body, his telepathy and magnetic control were not much worse than Eric and Charles. However, because he was not familiar with it, he was not as good as them in controlling it. At present, Charles and Eric had not been strengthened by Tianchi. They are all just level 4 mutants now. If Charles wears the brainwave amplifier, he can barely reach level 5 mutant. 
After acquiring these abilities, Zhang Bai got up and went to the manor, and began to familiarize himself with his abilities and adapt to his current body. Previously, because he had not adapted to the enhanced body, he broke a lot of furniture. Zhang Bai's adaptation to his body and experimental abilities was soon discovered by Wanda and others. They were all very surprised to see Zhang Bai use various abilities. Even Martin was a little surprised. Thinking about how I have strengthened my body twice, I feel relieved. The next day, Tony entered Zhang Bai's manor wearing an iron armor. Today was the day the hearing began. However, according to the timeline, Tony was not wearing armor. This time, Tony actually wore armor and entered the living room and drank wine from the wine cabinet without any hesitation. He greeted Wanda and the others with a smile. During this period, Tony often came here and brought a lot of things to compensate Wanda and the others. He even took out 10 billion US dollars to set up a fund to support the suffering children in Sokovia. This made Wanda and the others give him a chance to explain. Finally, after Tony's explanation and apology, Wanda and Pietro forgave Tony, but they still didn't treat him well. Tony didn't care, and he kept coming here every day. Soon Zhang Bai came down from the second floor in a white suit. Zhang, put on your armor. Let's go. I want to see how those politicians plan to take our armor away. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't even go. I don't care about the hearing. If they want to use tough tactics, I will just send them off. Okay, I know you are fearless, but please give me some face and let me handle it, okay? Ro, after seeing Zhang Bai coming down, Tony put down the wine glass in his hand, stood up and spoke. When he talked about politicians, his face was full of disdain and dissatisfaction, and he didn't take those people seriously at all. Hearing Tony's words, he replied calmly. Now that he has eight special abilities, he can escape unscathed even if facing the American military. He doesn't care about the hearing at all. It's because of Tony that he plans to go. When Tony saw Zhang Bai ready to kill at any time, his face changed and he immediately comforted Zhang Bai. He knew that Zhang Bai had some kind of confidence, but he didn't know what it was. But from his disdainful attitude towards the government and the military, he knew that Zhang Bai had something hidden that he hadn't shown. It is impossible for ordinary people to be indifferent to the government and the military and not take them seriously, unless they are mentally retarded. Zhang Bai is obviously not like that. The most likely reason is that there is something that makes him not take the American government and military seriously. After taking a deep look at Tony, Zhang Bai took out the magnetic armor from the system space, and the two of them, one red and one white, instantly soared into the sky and flew to the hearing location. The moment Zhang Bai left the manor, the artificial intelligence activated the invisible energy shield. At this time, the scene was already crowded with people, all waiting for Tony and Zhang Bai to arrive. Because of the exposure of their identities and Zhang Bai's handsome face, he had many fans. The popularity of the title of Silver Knight also rose sharply. However, Zhang Bai never admitted that he was the Silver Knight. He didn't like this, so he naturally wouldn't admit it. Soon, two figures appeared in the sky above the hearing site. They were Tony and Zhang Bai. Here they come. Iron Man and Silver Man are here. Iron Man. Woohoo. Silver Knight is so handsome. After Tony and Zhang Bai landed from the sky, the fans around them screamed wildly and wanted to approach them, but they were stopped by security. Then reporters from major newspapers took a lot of photos of Tony and Zhang Bai, and the two walked directly into the hearing site in their armor. Entering the hearing site, everyone was very surprised to see Tony and Zhang Bai wearing armor, but Tony saw his good brother Rhodes inside. Rhodes smiled helplessly when he saw Tony coming. He had no choice, otherwise he would not want to attend this hearing. He controlled the armor and came to the seat that belonged to the two of them and sat down. When he sat down, Zhang Bai directly left the armor. The armor was controlled by the intelligence system and stood beside him. The white suit on him was carefully matched, which made him look more elegant and perfect, very friendly and safe. He is heroic and has a noble temperament like a prince charming. The white suit he wears is like sunlight shining through the clouds, which is eye-catching. He has an upright posture and smooth lines, showing his elegance and charm. His facial features were clearly defined and deep, like a Greek sculpture, and his dark and deep icy eyes looked wild, uninhibited, evil and beauty. His three-dimensional facial features were as handsome as if they were carved with a knife, 
and he exuded the aura of a king who was dominating the world. On his evil and handsome face, there was a bohemian smile. Paired with a white suit, he showed off his noble and unique aristocratic style. His handsome and fresh facial features made people unable to help but stare at him frequently. Under the warm sunshine, his long hair dyed with sunlight was as gorgeous as precious gold foil, reflecting a brilliant golden ocean. Tony was slightly stunned when he saw Zhang Bai take off his armor. He looked at Zhang Bai with resentment and sat down. At present, he has not yet researched and manufactured armor that does not require mechanical arms to wear. He did not expect Zhang Bai to be able to do it. Mr. Tony Stark and Zhang Bai Horst, do you have a weapon armor that is enough to threaten national security? It's the one next to you. A week ago, a huge monster attacked New York, which also made us aware of the dangers of this world. So I think you should hand over the armor so that the country can have the ability to fight monsters. This is also your responsibility as a superhero, isn't it? A congressman spoke to Tony and Zhang Bai righteously, and bluntly asked the two to hand in the iron armor, and even labeled it as fighting against monsters. Hearing the other party's words, Zhang Bai showed a disdainful smile at the corner of his mouth. No, we don't, that depends on how you define the Iron Man armor. I think it's an auxiliary prosthesis. Where's Mr. Zhang Bai? I don't want to waste time talking to you. Are you using it to fight monsters, or do you want to use it to rule other countries? When the monsters appeared, you didn't come out to lead everyone to defeat the monsters. Now that the monsters have disappeared, you come out to jump again. You're a clown. Also, I have never admitted that I am a superhero. Also, I haven't settled the score with you for exposing my identity without permission. Wait. Good. Ha 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 ha, did you hear me? You're just a clown. Hearing the other party's question, Tony spoke to the other party with a dead pig's fearless look. After Tony finished speaking, the congressman turned his target to Zhang Bai. After all, Tony is the CEO of Stark Industries. Although he has someone behind him, it is still very difficult to deal with Tony. The other Zhang Bai was just an ordinary person with some money, so he planned to make a breakthrough from Zhang Bai. Zhang Bai, who noticed his intention, looked at the other party expressionlessly and spoke indifferently, with a hint of teasing in his eyes. Thinking of his identity being exposed by the other party, he flashed a trace of dissatisfaction in his eyes. Tony laughed out loud after hearing Zhang Bai's sharp words. The reporters beside him were even more excited to record everything. They didn't care at all that Zhang Bai didn't admit that he was a superhero. They only cared about the hot spots, and they would shoot whatever was hot. His words also made the congressman furious. Thinking of Zhang Bai's threats just now, he felt a chill on his back. Then he asked Rode to recite a law. He wanted to use the law to force Zhang Bai and Tony to hand over the iron armor. Rode smiled helplessly and began to recite. Finally, they started to tamper with the law. The angry congressman with a red face asked Justin Hammer to go on stage to speak, calling him a qualified weapons expert and asking him to define whether Zhang Bai and Tony's iron armor are weapons. It is obvious that Mr. Zhang Bai and Mr. Tony's armors are weapons, and they are weapons with great destructive power. They have seriously threatened the security of the country. I suggest that they be handed over to the country for handling. Weapons expert, him, I'm afraid he is the reinforcements sent by the monkey. These are the weapons you studied. The armor is out of control. Can't solve the energy problem. You are also called a weapons expert. I don't have time to chat with you, and I'm not in the mood to watch you two clowns perform. After Justin Hammer came to the stage, he took out a USB flash drive and plugged it into the excuse next to him. He began to analyze Zhang Bai and Tony's armor through the display screen next to him. In general, he wanted to define the two people's armor as weapons. Didn't everyone know if it was a weapon? Didn't the reporters present no? But Tony and Zhang Bai said it was a mechanical prosthesis, so the other party couldn't do anything to them. Tony looked at Justin Hammer's output with disdain. Hammer Industries and Stark Industries both manufacture arms, but Stark Industries always gets most of the military orders. Hammer Industries has never won over Stark Industries. The reason why the congressman invited Justin Hammer to come was probably because he promised to give the Iron Man armor to the other party for research. Tony looked at the clown and stopped listening to him. He used the artificial intelligence in the armor to directly invade the opponent's display screen. 
He then played the images and videos of some armor and war machine experiments of Hammer Industries to everyone. Now Justin Hammer panicked and started to cover the screen. Finally, Tony pulled out the power cord to stop the song from playing. Tony looked at Justin Hammer sarcastically and said, the disdain and sarcasm in his eyes made Justin Hammer furious, but he could only bear it. Zhang Bai next to him was already a little impatient. After making sarcastic remarks towards Justin Hammer and the so-called congressman, he was about to leave. After hearing Zhang Bai's words, the congressman and Justin Hammer were furious, and the congressman looked at Zhang Bai with anger in his eyes. Yellow monkey, you, what did you say? When the congressman remembered that Zhang Bai had Chinese ancestry, he directly said that Zhang Bai was a yellow-skinned monkey. Hearing this, Zhang Bai was instantly ignited, looking at the congressman with murderous eyes. After putting on the armor, he walked towards the congressman's position. Tony saw that the situation was not good and wanted to stop him. Hey, Zhang, calm down, give me some face, roll. Looking at Tony who wanted to stop him, Zhang Bai uttered a word indifferently. Tony had no choice but to take off his mask and prepare to use the armor to calm Zhang Bai down. When the congressman saw Zhang Bai walking towards him in the armor, his face turned pale instantly. Many security guards also looked at Zhang Bai cautiously, and Rode looked at the congressman speechlessly. The moment Tony put on his mask, Zhang Bai used his magnetic control and magnetic armor to move Tony aside. Shoot, quick, don't shoot, no, he approached the congressman step by step which made the congressman immediately order all the security personnel to shoot. Tony watched this scene helplessly and shouted to everyone that if they shot, they would be finished. Obviously, these security personnel would not listen to Tony. Gunshots rang out one after another, but none of them hit Zhang Bai. He was frozen in the air by the terrifying magnetic force he could control now. The next second, all the bullets returned to their original paths, killing all the shooters. Another bullet hit the congressman's forehead and then came to the camera. Don't bother me, I'm not a superhero. After saying this, he activated the flight mode and flew through the ceiling into the sky. Flying to his own manor, Rode and Tony looked at the chaotic scene, shook their heads, and began to contact their connections to take care of the rest. After all, this congressman was looking for death. It would be best to find some evidence of the other party's crime and make it public, which would also minimize the impact on Zhang Bai. The news soon spread through the live broadcast of the reporter, and the entire network was discussing Zhang Bai's killing of the congressman at the hearing. Some supported it, some opposed it, and some thought Zhang Bai was so handsome. This also made Zhang Bai's popularity high. The U.S. government also held a meeting because of this matter, but because of Tony's relationship, plus some of the things this congressman did privately, they were all suddenly exposed. In the end, they didn't come to a conclusion. But soon after Zhang Bai returned home, someone who surprised him came to visit. They were Coulson and Natasha. After Zhang Bai agreed, the two entered through the gate of the manor and soon arrived at the villa. Hey, isn't this the lady who sprained her ankle in the mall? Is this your girlfriend? Ahem. Mr. Zhang Bai, we are here to invite you to join us on behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D., never heard of it. It's not some pyramid scheme, is it? Tell me what you do. We, S.H.I.E.L.D., are a special force of the International Security Council that is used to deal with various bizarre events. We are also committed to maintaining world peace and protecting the safety of the Earth. We formally invite you to join the Avengers Project to protect the safety of the Earth, maintain world peace, and ensure that mankind does not become extinct. After seeing Natasha again, Zhang Bai teased her frivolously. However, Natasha just glanced at him and said nothing. Coulson next to him talked to Zhang Bai. When he heard about joining S.H.I.E.L.D., he immediately started to play dumb. Then Coulson began to explain the concept of S.H.I.E.L.D. and invited him to join the Avengers. I have no interest in your entire organization or plan. I am too small to defeat those monsters. In that case, Mr. Zhang Bai, since you killed a congressman in public, we are arresting you now. Try it yourself. Boom. Do you think I'm powerless without my armor? Don't even look at me. The team outside can't get in, let alone help you. Zhang Bai calmly said to the two of them about Coulson's invitation, but the next second after he refused, Coulson wanted to arrest him for killing a congressman in public. After hearing what the other party said, he still said very calmly. 
Then Natasha kicked over with a whip kick, but Zhang Bai caught her and broke her calf bone with a single force. Seeing this, Coulson pointed his gun at Zhang Bai with an incredible look on his face. He threw Natasha aside, took a sip of the coffee on the table, and looked at the two of them calmly. The two never expected that this Silver Knight was so powerful even without his armor on. He could break Natasha's shin bone with just the strength of his arm. Natasha, whose shin bone was broken, looked at Zhang Bai in disbelief. The sweat on her forehead showed that it was obviously not a pleasant experience to have her shin bone broken. Sensing Coulson's anxiety, Zhang Bai of course knew what the other party was waiting for. Naturally, the shield special mobile team that could not enter the manor could not come in because of the energy shield. From the beginning to the end, only Natasha and Coulson entered the manor. After hearing Zhang Bai's words, Coulson began to contact the special mobile team. But it was obvious that he could not contact the special mobile team outside the manor from inside the manor. This is a misunderstanding, we were just joking with you. Mr. Zhang Bai, it's just a joke. I promise. You think this is a joke, but I don't. I don't want to let the tiger go back to the mountain, so it's better for you to die here. After confirming that he could not contact the outside world, Coulson showed a smile that was uglier than crying and explained to Zhang Bai. However, Zhang Bai obviously did not intend to let it go. With a slight wave of his hand, Coulson's gun was directly controlled by Zhang Bai to fly out, and even Natasha's pistol and weapons were all suspended in the air. With murderous eyes, they looked at Coulson and Natasha and opened their mouths. The next second, their weapons were pointed at themselves. Zhang Bai's indifferent look didn't seem fake. The two of them were also very confused, because they had tested Zhang Bai at the hearing and confirmed that he was not a mutant. So the opponent's ability to control magnetism comes from the armor. Who knows that he not only possesses this ability, but also has terrifyingly strong physical fitness. Natasha who had been injected with serum, had her calf bones broken in an instant in his hands, which shows the opponent's strength. Hey, come on, I think we can talk, really. Okay, just kidding, give me Nick Fury's phone number. Well, okay. Seeing Coulson and Natasha looking ashen, Zhang Bai smiled and asked Coulson for Nick Fury's phone number, ready to extort something from Nick Fury. Now that his two generals were with him, he obviously would not miss this opportunity. Which one? Director Nick Fury, hello. I'm Zhang Bai, you should have heard of me. Two of your men attacked me in my home, so I detained them. I want 2084 items in exchange. Otherwise, you will see the bodies of Coulson and Natasha in an hour. By the way, I accidentally broke Natasha's calf. You'd better hurry up, otherwise you may become disabled. You, after answering Nick Fury's call, Zhang Bai told him what happened and asked for 2084 items in exchange, and only gave him one hour. He also told him that Natasha's calf was broken, and hung up the phone without waiting for the other party to reply. 084 is the intelligence code of S.H.I.E.L.D., which means objects of unknown origin, and some S.H.I.E.L.D. cannot even confirm what they are. 084 can mean a lot of things, including objects, energy, and even people. On the other side, Nick Fury cursed Zhang Bai after he hung up the phone. He then ordered several teams to go to the warehouse to retrieve 2084 objects and head to Zhang Bai's manor. But every agent was fully armed and had a lot of heavy firepower. How could he swallow the anger of kidnapping a shield agent and blackmailing Nick Fury? He had planned to give the things to the other party in exchange for Natasha and Coulson, and then capture the other party, so that the 284s would be back in his hands. Not long after, Nick Fury personally led the team to the gate of Zhang Bai's manor. Seeing the special mobile team unable to enter, his face was full of black lines. He notified Zhang Bai to come out for the transaction through the access device at the gate of the manor, and then signaled others to stand guard nearby. It came pretty fast. It hasn't even been an hour. Congratulations, you're still alive. Thank you. He used telekinesis to control Natasha and Coulson to walk to the entrance of the manor. When he arrived at the entrance, he saw the one-eyed man waiting for him. Seeing the two boxes under his feet, Zhang Bai opened his hands slightly, and the two boxes flew directly in front of Zhang Bai. After confirming that there were special energies inside, he did not let go of Natasha and Coulson. After Coulson and Natasha walked out of the door, Nick Fury did not speak to Zhang Bai, but made a gesture with his hands behind his back. 
A sniper in a hidden position instantly shot at Zhang Bai's leg. Boom. But it didn't hit Zhang Bai, but hit the invisible energy shield of the manor. Zhang Bai looked at Nick Fury calmly. When he decided to blackmail Nick Fury, he knew that Nick Fury would not give up, so he was mentally prepared. Boom. A purple laser attack shot out from the manor, instantly blasting the sniper's position. This scene made Nick Fury's face completely black. Zhang Bai still looked at Nick Fury calmly and did not choose to take action. He was not in a position to offend S.H.I.E.L.D. If the sniper attacked him just now, he would naturally fight back. But it was also an attitude shown to Nick Fury. If he continued to attack the manor, Zhang Bai would not hold back. He will kill them all here, including Nick Fury. However, Nick Fury just looked at Zhang Bai deeply, and left from the door with Coulson and Natasha. Seeing Nick Fury who chose to endure, Zhang Bai felt a little anxious again. The Sentinels exist in this world, and he doesn't know the details of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. What other cards does Nick Fury have besides Captain Marvel? He starts to think about how to deal with Nick Fury in the future. In the laboratory of Corvo University, Bruce Banner was doing a gamma ray experiment. But soon, the experiment went wrong, and a large amount of gamma rays entered Banner's body, causing his genes to mutate, his skin began to turn green, and his body gradually swelled up. Soon a green monster rushed out of the laboratory, and then fled from the New York City area with a few big jumps. He disappeared into the forest in the suburbs, and soon the military arrived. The leader was Thaddeus E. Ross, also known as Thunderbolt Ross, a lieutenant general of the United States Air Force. Elizabeth Talbot Ross is the father of Bruce Banner's girlfriend. After learning that there was an accident in the experiment, she rushed over, but just happened to see her father watching the video of Banner turning into a monster. She was grief-stricken in her heart, but Rose's eyes were full of fanaticism. Banner had become extremely powerful now, as could be seen from the fact that he had smashed the laboratory, crashed through the wall, and left downtown New York City in a few big jumps. If they could study him, they could obtain something more powerful than the super serum. In order to prevent Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro from being captured and attacked by S.H.I.E.L.D. or other organizations, Zhang Bai decided to let them study at home in the future. Through the holographic illusion of artificial intelligence, it absorbs all the knowledge on the internet and transforms into the image of a teacher to teach Wanda, Lorna, and Pietro. After class, they will receive training from Martin to better develop their abilities and improve their physical fitness. Tony told Zhang Bai about S.H.I.E.L.D. over the phone, and he directly told Tony what happened after S.H.I.E.L.D. came to him. Tony was silent for a while, then changed into a battle armor and came to Zhang Bai's manor. Zhang Bai was a little surprised by Tony's sudden arrival. After entering the villa, Tony spoke to Zhang Bai. Zhang, I want to form an organization of my own. I don't trust official entities like S.H.I.E.L.D. If I join, I will probably become a lackey of those congressmen. So I plan to form an organization of my own. You see, I have money and brains, and you can also research armor. We can definitely form an organization of our own. What do you think? Just like the giant monsters that appeared before, I guess they will definitely appear again in the future. I don't want to sit and wait for death when the time comes. There is nothing else to do but run away. How about we join together? I have already thought of a name for the organization, it is called the Illuminati. Looking at Tony with a serious face, he was a little confused. But Tony's proposal surprised him. He didn't expect Tony to want to form an organization himself. When Tony finally said the name, Zhang Bai's mouth couldn't help but twitch. Illuminati, an organization that Zhang Bai is very familiar with, a secret group from another parallel universe, composed of the smartest and most powerful superheroes on Earth. This organization is completely different from superhero groups such as the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, and the X-Men. It exists to solve crises that threaten the Earth and even the universe. It advocates small sacrifices to avoid greater sacrifices. The identities of Illuminati members are strictly kept secret. In the timeline, Tony, Peter Parker, and Stephen Strange once traveled to Titan via a spaceship, where they fought Thanos but were defeated. The future Sorcerer Supreme Stephen Strange was willing to hand over the Time Stone to save Tony. Then Thanos left Titan directly. But in the Illuminati universe, Tony and others killed Thanos directly on Titan. Even when Thanos had four Infinity Stones, the difference was not a little bit. Thanos died in a very aggrieved way, 
being pierced through the chest by his own weapon. This is enough to prove the power of the Illuminati. What Zhang Bai didn't expect was that Tony in this universe actually proposed to him the idea of forming the Illuminati. This made him begin to wonder if it was a butterfly effect caused by his arrival, but he was a little tempted. If he succeeds in forming the Illuminati, he won't have to worry about the future of S.H.I.E.L.D. He will also be able to obtain more special items in the future, and he can use these special items for trading in all realms. This will also speed up his growth. It's easier to have a team than to fight alone, and he can control the Illuminati. Facing this world with sentinels and creatures like Godzilla, he has never felt safe. If he creates the Illuminati, the pressure on him will be transferred to the members of the Illuminati. No matter what, creating the Illuminati is beneficial to him. Tony looked at Zhang Bai thinking silently without interrupting him. He sat on the sofa and waited quietly for Zhang Bai's reply. The reason why he looked for Zhang Bai was because Zhang Bai saved his life in the first place. He was already very strong, and he also had magnetic armor, and the laser weapons in the manor were not to be underestimated. He also showed his disdain for the government and the military. When S.H.I.E.L.D. invited him, he knew that they would definitely invite Zhang Bai. After his guess, he felt that Zhang Bai was not the kind of person who would join a government organization, so after he rejected S.H.I.E.L.D., he contacted Zhang Bai and told him what he was thinking. Yes, but we don't have enough people. Okay, I understand. I already have several candidates. The first one is Professor X, Charles. He has the ability of telepathy. The second one is Bruce Banner. He is a world-renowned physicist, but his current condition does not seem to be very good. He has turned into a green monster. The third one is Reed Richards. He graduated from world-class prestigious universities such as California Institute of Technology, Harvard University, Columbia University, Empire State University, and has obtained doctoral degrees in engineering, mathematics, physics and other fields. And the one who repelled the behemoth. Well, all of these are fine. The man who fought off the giant beast is called Robert Reynolds. His abilities are terrifying, and he has the power of millions of stars in his body. After gaining these powers, he developed an evil personality, nothingness. This also caused most of his energy to be spent on fighting against nothingness. Be careful when you look for him, don't let S.H.I.E.L.D. find out. I'm not sure whether S.H.I.E.L.D. has already established contact with him, but it's better to be careful. The power of a million stars. Hiss, does that mean he could lose control at any time? Looks like we have to speed up the formation. Finally, Zhang Bai agreed to form the Illuminati with Tony. Among the people Tony recommended, Reed Richards surprised Zhang Bai. Isn't this Mr. Fantastic's real name? He is known as one of the smartest people on earth. Add Tony himself and Banner, it's almost heaven. The last person chosen was actually Sentinel. Thinking of the terrifying strength he had shown in New York, Zhang Bai understood why Tony had included him. Then Zhang Bai told Tony the name and ability of Sentinel, as well as the situation of the second personality. After learning that the other party might lose control at any time, Tony's face looked very ugly. He didn't expect that there was such an unstable existence on Earth. However, Zhang Bai didn't care. Strictly speaking, Hulk could compete with the Sentinel. The potential of both is unlimited. In the comic timeline, Hulk's final form, Emperor Green, once fought against the Sentinel, and Hulk won the battle in the end. However, because the Sentinel was not in good condition, he had to fight against the Void, not the normal state of the Sentinel, but Hulk did not seem to have used all his strength. Chapter 51 Green Hulk simply wanted to fight the Sentinel, and in the process of fighting, he was distracted to protect the ordinary people who were affected, so it is unknown who is the strongest between the two, but their potential is indeed unlimited. Hulk has the opportunity to develop unlimited potential and grow, while the Sentinel needs to solve the void to develop unlimited potential. You can go find him and invite him to join us, but don't be too eager to conflict with him. There are still people on Earth who can restrain him. Is there anyone who can restrain him? Is there anyone stronger than him? The Supreme Sorcerer of Kam Taj, Ancient One. But it's not her, it's Vashanti behind her. It's not good for you to know too much now. The Sentinels will not go out of control and destroy the Earth for the time being. First, build the base of the Illuminati, and then invite members to join. Supreme Sorcerer, okay, maybe our first action is to help me solve the problem of palladium poisoning. 
Otherwise, I may not live long. There will be a way. After thinking for a while, Zhang Bai gave Tony some instructions, mainly because he was afraid that Tony's sharp tongue and arrogant personality would lead to a conflict between the two after he found the sentinel. In order to reassure Tony, he also told him about the Supreme Sorcerer Ancient One. However, the current Ancient One could not restrain and deal with the sentinel. Even if she has the time stone, her chances of winning are slim. When the energy reaches a certain peak, time and space will lose their meaning. Moreover, the Ancient One only uses time, not controls it. Only Vashanti behind Kam Taj can truly suppress and fight against the Sentinels. The appearance of the Sentinel meant that Ancient One had probably already contacted him and might have helped him suppress the Void. Otherwise, the existence of such an unstable factor could destroy the entire Earth at any time, so Ancient One would definitely have to take extra care of it. This was also the reason why Zhang Bai was not worried about the Sentinel getting out of control for the time being. Let Tony go and find the Illuminati base first. With his financial resources, it is naturally simple. He just needs to choose a site. After hearing Zhang Bai's instructions and explanation, Tony nodded and looked at Zhang Bai in surprise. He didn't expect Zhang Bai to know so many things. If it weren't for Zhang Bai, he might not even know that person's code name, let alone his real name. Then Tony talked about his palladium poisoning in a teasing tone, to which Zhang Bai nodded, but still did not tell him the information about the new element. He planned to wait until Tony was desperate before telling him, on the one hand to make Tony owe him a favor again, on the other hand to make Tony have a better understanding of life and change because of this incident, turning him completely from a playboy into a superhero. The Earth must be protected. Although he traveled through time, the earth is also where he lives, which is equivalent to his home. He naturally would not let others destroy his home, which is why Zhang Bai agreed to form the Illuminati with Tony. Soon, a golden red armor flew up from Zhang Bai's manor and flew towards his villa. This scene was also seen by some agents not far away, and then reported to Nick Fury. Yes, even if he couldn't enter Zhang Bai's manor, he still sent agents not far away to monitor it. Jarvis, create a file called, Illuminati. This file is my personal file and will not be uploaded to Stark Industries Information Network. And find a hidden location suitable for building an underground base. Okay, sir, several farms near the sea in the suburbs of New York are suitable for building underground bases. These farms can be used as cover. Do you need to acquire these farms? Investigate the holographic terrain and images. Let me take a look. Okay, sir. Okay, at this location, we will purchase these farms in the name of Stark Industries. After Tony left the manor, he began to think about who would be good for him and the organization if they joined the Illuminati, and soon he thought of one. That was the Black Panther of Wakanda. At this point, T'Chaka should still be the king of Wakanda, and T'Challa is not yet the king of Wakanda. In this case, the other party is very likely not to join the Illuminati. Wakanda's technology is hundreds of years ahead of other countries today, and they may be able to deal with Titans easily. If this is the case, the other party may really look down on the newly formed Illuminati. For this reason, he could only temporarily shelve the idea of inviting the next Black Panther T'Challa, but it seemed that the future Stephen Strange and Thor could be invited to join. But it was still too early, and thinking of Stephen Strange made Zhang Bai look very strange. Because the Ancient One once said that Stephen Strange is the most gifted in magic in the past thousand years, and she could be surpassed in the future. However, in a Spider-Man timeline, a fat boy named Ned leads beside Peter Parker. He used Stephen Strange's ring in the timeline and waved it casually according to his gesture to make the spark of the portal appear in the air. Later, he used the ring to open a portal without even chanting any spells, and the portal he opened was to another parallel universe. When Stephen Strange used the ring to learn portal magic, he was thrown into the snowy mountains by the Ancient One and almost couldn't come back. But he took much longer than Ned, which made Zhang Bai start to wonder if Ancient One was wrong. Compared with the two, wasn't Ned's talent stronger? Perhaps there was a destiny, and it was Stephen Strange who appeared in the timeline instead of Ned Leeds. He was very optimistic about Ned Leeds, such a magic genius, if Ancient One didn't want him, he wouldn't mind taking Ned Leeds into his own side. As for magic, there were more places in the world that knew magic than Cam Taj, even the Black Queen of the former Hellfire Club knew magic. To be precise, it is witchcraft. 
The form and name are different, but the essence is the same. Both are performed by borrowing the power of demons from other dimensions or one's own power. This is why the magicians of Kam Taj are called melee magicians. That is because their magic power cannot support their wanton use of magic, and borrowing the power of other dimensional demons comes at a price. Not every wizard can use his background and the time gem to be a deadbeat-like ancient one. But there are people willing to lend it to her, even Dormammu, the lord of the dark dimension who wants to invade the real world all the time. If the ancient one is eroded and bewitched by his dark energy, then he can get a powerful magic servant like ancient one, and use ancient one to unlock the development of the three major temples on earth. In this way, he can invade reality and devour the earth. Compared with the little power lent to Ancient One, it is not worth mentioning. He was very willing to do this kind of thing, where the gains far outweigh the investment. Many dimensional demons and lords were willing to lend their power to Ancient One. But they never expected that Ancient One had no intention of paying it back from the beginning, and was always fighting against the temptation of Dormammu's dark power. In the end, Dorma lost more than he gained. Not only are there many traces of magic on Earth. There are also many magic and witchcraft in Asgard. He can always get some through Thor. In addition, he may also be able to get people who trade with the magic world in the future. It is natural for Ned to learn magic. What puzzled Zhang Bai was that he had been in this world for several months, but Ancient One had not appeared in front of him. Earth had three major temples and magic arrays, so it was easy to know about his alien soul and consciousness, but the other party had not appeared yet. You know, he has been constantly influencing the timeline, from adopting Wanda and Pietro, to Lorna. Saving Tony, to affecting Ethan and Obadiah. The timeline has been almost completely influenced by him, and even now the Ancient One is still sitting still. Just as Zhang Bai was thinking, the system prompted that Tom had sent a call, and he answered it with a puzzled look. Then he saw Tom looking at him pitifully and tearfully through the screen. What's the matter with you, Tom? It was very curious about why Tom was like this, so it immediately asked Tom. Then it turned around, took out a piece of paper and a pen and started writing. After a while, it held the paper in front of itself with both hands. My fish and cheese are gone. They were eaten by that stinky mouse Jerry. I am so sad. Tom, don't cry. I'll give you some more. So, go talk to Jerry. I'll give you some things, and you can pass them to Jerry for me and tell him that I want to be friends with it. After reading what Tom wrote, Zhang Bai frowned slightly. Jerry almost caused an accident in his transaction with Tom twice. This time, he even stole everything he gave to Tom. Even if he had a good temper, he was still very dissatisfied. Looking at Tom's pitiful eyes, he hurriedly spoke to comfort Tom. And promised to give him some, and the next moment he came up with a good idea. In Tom's world, it is almost impossible to eliminate it and Jerry. Jerry is the same as Tom. If Tom is a scientist, then Jerry can also become a scientist, and sometimes even better than Tom. So he decided to befriend Jerry, not only because of his ability, but also because he has a group of extremely powerful relatives. For example, Jerry's eldest cousin, Marsal, is a powerful mouse wearing yellow and green stripes. His strength is so terrifying that he can easily take over Tom. Jerry's second cousin, Charlfuz, is a mouse wearing a magic hat and holding a magic wand. His magic is very powerful. He also has a fairy sister whose ability is even more amazing. He has all kinds of outrageous magic. He also has a nephew, Taffy. His nickname is the Blasting Genius, and his bomb art has made Tom suffer a lot. It is suspected that there is the blessing of the whole world's luck, and anything can be turned into a safe place. This ability is sometimes more terrifying than strong strength. If these beings can come to this world, he dare not imagine how outrageous it would be. Tom nodded in delight when he heard that Zhang Bai would give him something again. Then he looked puzzled when he was told to talk to Jerry. However, with the blessing of food, he nodded in agreement. Then Zhang Bai took out a lot of fish and two whole round cheeses from the system space and traded them to Tom. Tom, one of them is for Jerry. You can't steal it, or I won't give it to you next time. Thinking of Tom's restless look, Zhang Bai gave Tom a serious warning. Tom nodded to indicate that he understood and hung up the call. At this time, Zhang Bai realized that Tom's favorability towards him had reached 99%. 
It was probably because he was willing to give Tom food this time. I just don't know who Tom's owner is. The most common ones are a white beauty and a black lady. Although Tom thinks about eating all day, he is actually very loyal. This 1% is not easy to break through. Maybe we can start with his owner. If it was the black lady, maybe she could buy Tom with money, but it would be a bit difficult if it was the white beauty. The black lady was not nice to Tom, and she and Jerry made trouble in the house all day, which made her have a very bad impression of Tom. The white beauty really likes Tom. She wouldn't get angry even if Tom almost demolished her house. If you want to buy Tom from her, you have to use some tricks. On the other side, Tom got the fish and cheese given by Jong Bai and started eating excitedly. Looking at the two huge pieces of cheese, he really wanted to take them for himself. Thinking of Jong Bai's instructions, Tom reluctantly carried a piece of cheese to the entrance of Jerry's cave and knocked on the wall next to him. Jerry saw Tom holding a big piece of cheese and putting it next to his hole. He was writing something. The moment he saw the cheese, his eyes were directly on the cheese, but he looked at Tom curiously, not knowing what he was writing. After a while, Tom finished writing and handed the paper to Jerry, asking him to take a look. After Jerry tried it twice and found that it was not Tom's conspiracy, he took the paper and began to read the contents. This is a gift from my good human friend. He said he wanted to make friends with you and asked me to come and talk to you. Although I am very reluctant, I still came. I hope you will not steal my fish and cheese in the future. These things are all given to me by my good human friend. Jerry nodded his agreement after reading it, and Tom got up and left. Seeing that Tom really left without taking the cheese away, Jerry began to believe what was said above, so he divided the cheese into small pieces and soon moved all of them into his home. After escaping from New York, Banner smuggled into Brazil and was chased by General Ross several times on the way. He knew his current situation. If he was caught by Ross, he might be imprisoned in the laboratory for research in the future. He had no choice but to hide in this slum in Brazil. He learned yoga to prevent himself from getting angry, because once he got angry, the green monster in his body would appear. Bruce Banner now thinks Hulk is a monster. He hates himself now because Hulk has made him unable to go home, unable to do his career and research, unable to see his partner, and has to hide in this slum. He is a doctor with multiple degrees, but he has to work in a beverage factory. This gap makes him close to collapse. In order to solve the monster in his body, he has contacted a Mr. Lan in New York. He can help him solve the problem of gamma rays. But what Banner didn't know was that Hulk had already merged with him. He wanted to eliminate Hulk, unless he committed suicide, but with Hulk's existence, he couldn't commit suicide at all. The current Hulk was just a newborn baby, and his mind and cognition were not complete. Coupled with Benner's dislike and disgust, he feels very wrong. Facing the enemy's attack, he will definitely be angry. Naturally, it is easy to cause damage and harm. And Hulk has many forms, such as, Grey Hulk, Savage Hulk, Sculpture Hulk, Lost Hulk, World Crusher Hulk, Combined Hulk, Dark Hulk, War Hulk, Demon Hulk, and Sin Hulk. Captain Hulk, Composite Hulk, Hulk Breaker Nor, Dr. Green, K-Hulk, Immortal Hulk, Ultimate Hulk, Warlord Hulk, and even Mechanical Hulk. In a parallel universe, Bruce Banner once used his own wisdom. The entire Hulk is transformed into the Mechanical Hulk, and the Hulk's personality is trapped in the mind, using his anger as energy. The Mechanical Hulk becomes extremely powerful, and the Hulk's anger level is as high as level 10. Bruce Banner controls the Mechanical Hulk and regulates his anger. However, according to the current situation, the Hulk in this universe belongs to the Hulk in the movie world, but he also has unlimited potential. It's just that Bruce Banner has never developed this potential, and later directly made the Hulk's personality disappear, causing him to become Dr. Green, and his strength was greatly reduced. After he finished his yoga class, he went to work in the beverage factory. However, while repairing an extremely difficult operating table, he accidentally cut his hand, and a drop of blood fell into the beverage bottle below, but he did not notice it. He only saw the blood on the shelf next to him. He felt relieved only after wiping the blood off with his clothes. According to his research, his own blood no longer belonged to the category of human. If any creature accidentally consumed or came into contact with his blood, it would most likely be infected by the gamma factor in the blood and cause body mutation. 
At the same time, it may also bring him trouble. Time passed quickly, and when she was off work, one of the better-looking women in the beverage factory was stopped by several men. Looking at the other party's frivolous and obscene expressions, it was obviously not a good thing. Banner had originally not intended to care, because he was afraid that he would lose control of himself and the monster inside him would appear. Once his heart rate reached nearly 170, the monster inside him would appear directly. In order to avoid this, he restrained himself, kept to himself, and never socialized with anyone. But in the end, Banner still pulled the woman away from the men. Because the factory owner was nearby, the men were upset but did not take action directly. However, they were already holding a grudge and were ready to take revenge on Banner in the future. A month later, Ross brought several soldiers to a hospital and saw a person on the bed infected with the gamma factor. A gleam of light flashed in his eyes. After a while, according to his men's report, the gamma factor infected by the other party matched Bruce Banner's blood factor. Ross quickly found out the reason for Bruce Banner's condition from the infected person. Through the drink he drank, Ross quickly located Bruce Banner's location. It was the beverage factory in Brazil, and it was Banner's blood that caused this situation. He fell into the bottle and didn't find the reason, which directly led to his position being exposed. After Ross learned Banner's location, he did not tell his daughter, Banner's girlfriend. After coming to the army headquarters and taking away a soldier king, he took his men to Brazil, where Banner was. When Ross and his men arrived at the slum, Banner was in his room communicating with Mr. Blue. He obtained some serum through the other party's experiment and injected it directly into his body. After the injection, he finally smiled when he saw the gamma factor in his blood cells decrease rapidly. But soon, the gamma factor covered the entire blood factor again, which made him stunned. It also meant that the laboratory had failed. He still couldn't eliminate the monster in his body, so he had no choice but to continue communicating with Mr. Lan. In the end, the other party invited him to the laboratory in New York for in-depth research. When he was hesitant, he suddenly saw from the window that soldiers in special camouflage uniforms were approaching him. Knowing that he was exposed, Banner put the computer and some key items into the backpack, and then used some strips of cloth to tie them into a rope. After fixing the position, he started to climb downstairs from the window and entered a house below. Unexpectedly, it was the woman he had saved in the factory before. The other party was also very surprised that Banner would come down from the window, but Banner did not have time to explain to her. Don't tell me I was here, thank you. After saying a word, he opened the door and left in another direction. The woman looked at Banner as he was about to say something, but in the end she didn't say anything. After a while, Banner's original house was kicked open by several soldiers, and Emil Bronsky led the way and quickly entered the room. He looked around with a tranquilizer gun in hand, but he didn't find Bruce Banner in the end. Looking at a cloth rope fixed on the window, he realized that the other party had escaped from the window. This cat-and-mouse game made Bronsky even more excited. General, he was never in the house. He escaped through the window. We are a step too late. I know send out the drones to search for him. He can't get far on his own. Yes, Ross, who was sitting in the command vehicle, received a report from Bronsky and gave an order in a deep voice. He must catch Bruce Banner this time. His plan to create a super soldier is not far away. As the drone took off, everyone soon discovered Bruce Banner's whereabouts. Led by Bronsky, the team started chasing him again, continuously shooting anesthetic needles at Bruce Banner but they were all cleverly avoided by the other party. Bruce Banner looked at the heart rate displayed on his watch and was increasing, forcing him to stop and take a deep breath at a corner to lower his heart rate. However, Bronsky did not give him much time, and in a blink of an eye he saw Bruce Banner. He raised the tranquilizer gun in his hand and shot, but missed. Realizing that the other party was catching up with him, Banner started to run again, leaving Bronsky far behind through the criss-crossing alleys and roads around him. Gradually, only Bronsky could catch up with Bruce Banner. The long chase made Bronsky very angry. He couldn't catch up with a scientist after chasing him for so long. His pride as an ace made him very uncomfortable. He felt that his strength was insulted, and he also hated Bruce Banner in his heart. Then he chased after him again, and whenever he saw Bruce Banner, he would shoot him directly. 
Banner was almost exhausted from facing Bronsky's high-intensity pursuit. Although Hulk was extremely powerful, he himself did not get any enhancement. He was an ordinary man from the beginning to the end. Facing the pursuit of the military's ace soldier, if he was not familiar with the terrain, he might have been caught by the other side. Banner came to a busy street and hid in the crowd to calm his heart rate. He used the crowd to cover himself so that Bronsky could not find him. But luck was not on his side. The three people who had offended him for saving the woman happened to see Banner. The bald man in the middle led the way towards Banner, which made Banner, who already felt bad, feel even more bitter. The three people looked aggressive and had bad intentions. He took a deep breath and continued to run. He was discovered by Bronsky and chased after him. The bald trio also discovered that Banner was running away and immediately chased after him, wanting to teach him a lesson. Banner was chased by two groups of people. As he felt bitter, his heart rate began to rise. Soon he found himself at a beverage factory. With nowhere to go, Banner had to run into the factory. The bald trio who were chasing him also followed Banner into the beverage factory. Now that there was no one in the factory, it was a good opportunity to teach them a lesson. The bald man felt unhappy when he thought about Banner interrupting his good deeds before, and Banner ran deeper into the beverage factory. Bronsky chased after the person who came to the factory. It was only with the help of the drone that he knew Bruce Banner had entered the factory. Mainly because he was not familiar with the terrain, the bald trio entered the beverage factory before him. Banner hid in a corner of the factory to calm his heart rate and avoid the pursuit of the bald trio, but he was discovered by the bald trio the next second. Snapped. Run. Can't you run very well? I told you not to ruin my good deeds. I will teach you a lesson. No. Give me back my backpack and don't irritate me, or you'll regret it, trust me. Boom. Banner who was caught by the bald trio, was immediately surrounded by them. The bald man snatched Banner's backpack and slapped him. Then the other two hit Banner in the stomach. Banner, feeling his heart rate rising rapidly, spoke weakly to the three men. But the other party obviously didn't believe it, and after hitting Banner in the stomach again, his heart rate instantly reached a level that Hulk could appear, and then Banner's skin began to turn green, his body began to swell, his clothes and shoes were directly torn, and Hulk appeared. Roar, Hulk appeared and slapped a man away. The bald man and the other man rolled and crawled out of the beverage factory, but Hulk would not give them a chance. He grabbed a machine from the side and threw it in the direction of the bald man and the other man. After the terrifying force threw the machine out, it hit the two people in the next second, and they were instantly smashed into meat patties, and blood splattered everywhere. At this time, Bronsky appeared and was shocked when he saw the big green monster in front of him. Because Ross did not tell him that there was another Hulk inside Bruce Banner. He simply thought that the other party was just a weak scientist. After he realized what was happening, he immediately switched his weapon to a submachine gun and attacked the green monster in front of him. The bullets did not leave any scars on Hulk's body, it was just a tickle to Hulk. Boom. The next second, Hulk grabbed the machine next to him and threw it at Bronsky but Bronsky dodged it and continued to attack Hulk with his submachine gun after a roll. Several black cars arrived outside the beverage factory one after another, and soldiers got out of them one by one, rushing into the beverage factory with weapons in hand. He began to cooperate with Bronsky to attack Hulk, and even brought heavy firepower for this purpose. The dense bullets hit Hulk's body. Although Hulk would not be injured, it was very annoying. The angry Hulk lifted the surrounding machinery and threw it at the soldiers attacking him. Boom! A soldier aimed at Hulk with an RPG and pulled the trigger, successfully hitting Hulk. Bronsky looked at this scene and breathed a sigh of relief. He thought the other party should have been dealt with, but the next second he saw Hulk appear in front of everyone unharmed. This scene was beyond Bronsky's understanding. Even the RPG could not hurt the opponent. How terrifying was the defense! Then he began to cooperate with the surrounding soldiers to use weapons to suppress Hulk, but Hulk did not play by the rules at all. Rushing towards Bronsky and the others, Bronsky dropped his submachine gun, took two grenades from the waist of the soldier next to him, pulled the safety pin and threw them at Hulk, then grabbed the soldier in front of him. He ran to the side with him. As the grenade exploded, Hulk was still intact, but the soldiers hit by Hulk were not so lucky. Some were knocked out, and some were directly stepped on by Hulk, with their heads directly exploded. 
Only Bronsky and the soldier he had just saved were left at the scene. The rest were almost all injured to varying degrees and could no longer fight. But Bronsky did not admit defeat. He picked up a rifle from the ground and continued to attack Hulk. The same happened to the soldier he rescued. Hulk grabbed a thick iron pipe from the side and threw it towards Bronsky and the soldier. He didn't care whether it hit him or not, and jumped through the roof of the factory and left. After a few more big jumps, he entered the forest and disappeared from everyone's sight. Because Hulk threw it casually, Bronsky and the soldier were lucky enough not to be hit. Ross, who was in the command vehicle, looked very unhappy when he found Banner escaping again. Now he had no ability to pursue him, so he could only make another plan. Soon Bronsky came to the command vehicle with Banner's backpack. General, this is Bruce Banner's backpack. Okay, take the wounded away and let's go back to New York. Bronsky entered the command vehicle and handed Banner's backpack to Ross. Ross was delighted when he saw the computer inside, thinking that he might be able to get some information from it. Then he asked Bronsky to arrange for the wounded and return to New York immediately. Bronsky looked at General Ross with hesitation, but in the end he didn't ask. He left the command vehicle and directed the soldiers to take the wounded away. He was full of doubts about Bruce Banner. After all, the other party suddenly became so powerful. General Ross's purpose of chasing the other party might be to obtain this power. Although Bronsky is a warrior, it does not mean that he cannot think. Bruce Banner is indeed a very good scientist. Even if he stole the military's experimental data, it is impossible for a lieutenant general to lead a team to hunt him down. If it was that power, it would be possible. During this month, Zhang Bai's relationship with Tom and Jerry has improved a lot. Tom's favorability has not yet exceeded 100%. It is probably the same as he thought, that he should be able to get 100% favorability if he buys it from Tom's owner. Tony had been coming quite frequently during this period, and told him the location of the Illuminati base. Now the construction of that location had already begun, with Tony personally researching some machinery, and the construction speed was extremely fast. In the past month, the construction was almost completed. I can only say that the construction companies in this world are too outrageous. I feel relieved when I think that this is Marvel. In the timeline, after the Battle of New York, it didn't take long for New York to return to its original state. This shows how powerful the construction companies in the Marvel world are. However, Tony used a construction company under Stark Industries. During this period of time, no monsters appeared, and Zhang Bai also made a deal with Grey Wolf. The item traded was the aerospace mothership. It still required a variety of black technology capabilities. Grey Wolf didn't say exactly what he wanted, but just said that he would tell Zhang Bai when he wanted it in the future. It seems that it was the friendship that played a role. He didn't worry that Zhang Bai would not do it. Zhang Bai also readily agreed to this. Favors are like this. If you give and take, the relationship between the two will be closer. When Grey Wolf's friendship with him reaches 100%, he can directly invite Grey Wolf to this world. Zhang Bai also uses the aerospace mothership for the Illuminati and himself in the future. Under normal circumstances, he will not take it out unless there is some emergency. In addition, he planned to raise Tom's favorability to 100%. Looking at the gold bars in his hand, Zhang Bai prepared to contact Tom. As for Tom's owner, he had already figured it out. It was the Black Lady. In this way, buying Tom should be much smoother. After connecting to Tom, it is now lying on the sofa with Jerry, watching TV and eating cheese. During this period of time, Zhang Bai has given Tom and Jerry a lot of delicious food and snacks. Tom, give this bar of gold to your master, and let him take out what I traded to you. Zhang Bai also mentioned it to Tom several times during this period. Tom was very hesitant at first, but he agreed later. Then Zhang Bai traded a circular device and a gold bar to Tom. The circular device was a holographic projection, and it had not reached 100%, so he could not go to Tom's world. Tom can only be purchased from the Black Lady through the holographic projection device. With Tom's consent, a piece of gold and a round device appeared in Tom's hand, and then the round device instantly changed into Zhang Bai's appearance. These were all set before, and Zhang Bai was not controlling it through the system. Grey Wolf's technology is not yet advanced enough to be able to control across a world. 
Zhang Bai appeared in front of Tom wearing a white suit and was quickly discovered by the black lady. Who are you? How did you get in? Hello, ma'am, I want to buy your cat. This is my price. Tom, give it to her. Gold bars. Okay. Deal. Tom is yours from now on. Okay. The black lady looked at Zhang Bai in the holographic projection with a serious face, her eyes full of vigilance. Because the holographic projection made Zhang Bai no different from a normal person, she didn't know it was just a projection. Then Zhang Bai told her the purpose of his visit and signaled Tom to give the gold bar to the black lady. After seeing a gold bar, the other party agreed to sell Tom to Zhang Bai without a second thought. After snatching the gold bar from Tom, he waited excitedly and bit it with his teeth. He became even happier after confirming that it was a real gold bar. Tom, on the other hand, looked dejected. The moment the black lady agreed to the deal, Zhang Bai discovered that Tom's favorability towards him reached 100%. He would be able to enter Tom's world, and Tom could also enter his own world. Not only Tom, but even Jerry could come to this world through Tom. Tom, don't be discouraged. She doesn't know what a treasure she has missed. Don't worry, I will cherish you more than she does. After noticing the sadness on Tom's face, Zhang Bai spoke to Tom sincerely. Tom nodded and regained his former glory. Then Zhang Bai invited Tom and Jerry to come to his world. The next second, his holographic projection device was held in Tom's hand, and then he grabbed Jerry with one hand. It disappeared from the spot in an instant. The black lady was a little frightened when she saw this strange scene, but after finding out that the gold was real, she patted her chest and walked towards her bedroom. Ding! The trading object has been detected to have come to the host's world. Once the trading object has been away from his world for too long, the trading object's world will gradually become separated from the system over time and space, and the trading object will never be able to return to the original world. The trading object must return to the original world within one year to ensure that the original world will not be separated from the system. At this time, the system suddenly popped up a prompt, which made Zhang Bai a little nervous at first, but he was relieved after seeing the one-year time. As long as Tom went back once a year, it would be fine. As the system's voice fell, a white light appeared in front of Zhang Bai, followed by a blue and white cat and a brown mouse, which were Tom and Jerry. The moment Tom saw Zhang Bai's true form, he immediately rushed over and hugged Zhang Bai's thigh. Welcome, Tom and Jerry. After rubbing Tom and Jerry's little heads, he smiled and said, Tom and Jerry also smiled and nodded. Just when Zhang Bai was happy, he found that the wall in the room began to reverse. Seeing this, he instantly became alert. Tom and Jerry looked at the reversed walls and ceiling with curiosity. According to the information in his memory, he already knew who the person was. That was the supreme sorcerer of Kam Taj, Ancient One. This move should be the mirror space. Master Ancient One, I didn't expect you to come to me now. Because of the appearance of Tom and Jerry. You do know me, yes. I have been observing you in the mirror space since you appeared on Earth and I found that you know a lot about the future and the things in the timeline. But I didn't take it seriously at first, because it couldn't pose a threat to the earth and the future. Once this happens, I will banish you to the void without hesitation. This is why I haven't met you in person. But the appearance of this cat and mouse has broken everything in the future. I can't even see what they are. Because of their arrival, your will will affect the entire timeline, and I still have no way to deal with you. At this time, a circle of sparks appeared not far away, and a bald woman in a yellow robe walked out of it. This was the same as Zhang Bai's guess, and then he took the lead in asking Ji Yu Yi. Because Ji Yu Yi had never appeared before, but now that Tom and Jerry appeared, he instantly pulled himself into the mirror space. This made Zhang Bai doubt Ji Yu Yi's purpose. Although he was very wary of Ji Yu Yi, he was not worried about what Ji Yu Yi would do to him. Now he was Tom's master, and Jerry also had a great liking for him. With them around, he was not afraid of Ji Yu Yi at all, even if she was a godlike strongman. Ji Yu Yi was not surprised at all when she heard Zhang Bai say her name. She spoke to Zhang Bai calmly and told him what she had observed about him in the mirror space. When she finally mentioned Tom and Jerry, her eyes were full of confusion and shock. She could not see through these two creatures at all. All kinds of outrageous abilities gave Ji Yu Yi a headache, and the danger level of Zhang Bai in his heart increased by several levels. 
He even said that Zhang Bai's will would affect the entire timeline in the future. Tom and Jerry are idealistic beings. You should have seen a lot of results through the time stone. I really want to know the result after you attack me. Idealism. How so? I didn't expect you to know the time stone. Yes, I used the time stone to see 30 million possible outcomes. 10 million of them were that I defeated you and killed you. The other 20 million were that we failed, Kam Taj was destroyed, and even Vashanti. And in those 10 million outcomes, you were resurrected 10 million times by them, and finally made a comeback. As for the results, I can no longer see through them. The time stone cannot see your future, and the range I can see is shrinking. It's pretty much what I guessed. You don't have to look at me with worry. I'm not crazy enough to destroy the world. The earth is my home. How could I destroy it? Zhang Bai was not surprised by Ji Yuyi's words. It would be surprising if she didn't monitor him. As a wizard who has protected the earth for hundreds of years, she would not let go of any unstable factors, and would not let this unstable factor out of her sight no matter what. Zhang Bai was very curious about the result of Ancient One's attack on him. From the moment Ancient One appeared, Zhang Bai knew that she must have observed the future through the time stone. Then there must be a result after attacking him. He didn't expect that his chances of winning were quite high, and he actually beat Kam Taj 20 million times. But he had died 10 million times. But he was resurrected by Tom and Jerry every time. Zhang Bai had no doubt about their abilities. As long as they wanted, a piece of candy could be made into something that could resurrect him. Now he was Tom's master. With Tom's character, he would definitely save him. This is also the reason why Zhang Bai is fearless. Looking at Ji Yuyi's worried eyes, he knows what Ji Yuyi is thinking. After a slight smile, he said to Ji Yuyi that he really has no idea of destroying the world, never has, and the earth is even less likely to be destroyed. I hope so. By the way, if you have anything to do, you can go directly to the New York Temple and ask the wizard there to take you to me. You should know the address. Okay, thank you Master Ancient One. Finally, Ji Yuyi looked at Zhang Bai with a complicated expression and spoke, and then sent Zhang Bai, Tom, and Jerry out of the mirror space. Zhang Bai did not refuse Ji Yuyi's kindness. After all, he was the supreme wizard of Kam Taj, and there were many magics in it, which might be used in the future. When Zhang Bai, Tom and Jerry returned to the room, they saw Martin, Wanda, Lorna and Pietro were all in his room. They were very surprised to see Zhang Bai suddenly appear. The worries in their eyes also disappeared. Why are you all here? Just now the manner's artificial intelligence reminded me that the connection with you has been cut off, so we all came here. Wow, what a cute cat. And a little mouse, did you buy it? So that's how it is. I'm fine. Its name is Tom, and its name is Jerry. I didn't buy them, but they will be our family from now on. They are very smart. Really, so cute. Seeing that everyone was in their own room, Zhang Bai asked Martin in confusion, and learned that it was the artificial intelligence that told everyone that the connection with it was cut off, thinking that it should be when entering the mirror space. However, Wanda and Lorna saw Tom in Zhang Bai's arms and Jerry on his shoulders at a glance. Then Tom and Jerry were held in the arms of Wanda and Lorna, especially Tom, whose little head was rubbed by Wanda the whole time. Zhang Bai told them that Tom and Jerry would be family in the future, which moved Tom and Jerry very much. Then Zhang Bai brought everyone to a huge room on the third floor of the villa. There were two huge refrigerators, a TV, a sofa, toys, snacks, and the floor was covered with furry carpets. This room was prepared by Zhang Bai for Tom and Jerry. Everything inside is for the two of them. This room is right above Zhang Bai's room, and the middle is connected. Tom and Jerry can enter Zhang Bai's room directly at any time. Tom, Jerry, this room is yours from now on. You can eat all the snacks and things in the refrigerator. It doesn't matter if you eat them all. You can keep buying more. After bringing everyone to this huge room, he said to Tom and Jerry, who excitedly broke free from Wanda and Lorna's arms and instantly appeared on the sofa. He turned on the TV skillfully, ran to the refrigerator, took out a lot of things, and sat on the sofa to watch TV. This scene directly shocked Wanda and the others. They began to wonder if they were dazzled. What Tom and Jerry showed just now was not like a normal cat and mouse at all. Zhang Bai just smiled slightly and did not explain too much. Tom and Jerry had many magical places. They will all see it in the future. At this time, 
Zhang Bai received a message from Tony, which showed the situation of a beverage factory in Brazil and a video shot by some people. The green monster in the video was Hulk. After seeing Hulk escape from the beverage factory, he knew that Bruce Banner would come to New York soon. It was hard to comment on Banner. All we could say was that he was miserable. He turned into a monster due to an experiment and then was hunted by the military. A multi-degree PhD was hiding in a slum, and his girlfriend fell in love with another man while he was on the run. It can only be said that Banner is somewhat miserable, but if he returns to New York, he may be able to invite him to join the Illuminati. If Tony only wants to ensure that he is not hunted by the military, perhaps he can do it. But I am afraid that S.H.I.E.L.D. will intervene, and Hulk, who is such a powerful fighter, will not give up. As time goes by, the Illuminati's base has been built. In order to avoid accidents, Zhang Bai uses his telepathic ability to blur the memory of all the workers who built the base so that they don't remember the location. Now there are only Tony and Zhang Bai in the Illuminati base. The two men sat in front of a huge round table with a blue screen rising in the middle, playing the video that Tony had sent him before, which was about Banner and Hulk. If Bruce Banner can join us, then we will not only gain a multi-degree doctor with super high IQ, but also a powerful combat force. It is totally feasible. The problem is that you have to solve the problems with the military and the government first. You have some friendship with Ross and maybe you can give him something to make him let go. But S.H.I.E.L.D. will definitely intervene. They will not allow an unmanaged organization like us to exist, especially the director, who wants to control everything in his own hands. This is indeed a problem, but I have thought of a solution. Based on my search during this period and with the assistance of Jarvis, I can confirm that the Sentinel is in New York. As for the exact location, I am not sure. If the Sentinel joins us, then we don't have to worry about S.H.I.E.L.D. If I'm in New York, I can find him. This is what I used to find you in Afghanistan. Finding the Sentinel shouldn't be a problem. I also hope you can invite someone to join us. Her name is Zhao Hailun. She is researching a scientific research project called Cradle of Life. The Cradle of Life is a disguised form of nanotechnology. With this technology, your armor can be improved a lot, and it will also be of great benefit to the Illuminati. And you have palladium poisoning. Come to my house in a few days and I will help you clear it. As for the new energy source, I will try my best. That's good. As long as we find him and let him join us, many problems will be solved. I will invite Zhao Hailun. It's already very good to be able to clear it. You don't know, I drink that chlorophyll every day. I'm about to vomit. After the video was played, Tony spoke first, saying that if Bruce Banner was invited to join, both technology and combat power would play a significant role. Then Zhang Bai talked about what might happen after inviting Bruce Banner to join the Illuminati, and it would be difficult for both Ross and S.H.I.E.L.D. to deal with it. Then Tony expressed his thoughts. He should be able to handle Ross's situation. As for S.H.I.E.L.D., he planned to invite the Sentinel to join the Illuminati. Even S.H.I.E.L.D. would not dare to act rashly at that time. He also told Zhang Bai that the Sentinel was in New York. Zhang Bai was a little surprised to hear that the Sentinel was in New York. He then took out the thing he had asked Grey Wolf to make, which was used to find Tony in Afghanistan. Use this to find the Sentinel in New York. And let Tony invite Zhao Hailun to join. Zhao Hailun, a Korean scientist, is researching the Cradle of Life, which is equivalent to a disguised form of nanotechnology, but it has not yet reached the level of nanotechnology. But there is hope that it will achieve the potential and foundation of nanotechnology. Then he asked Tony to come to him in a few days to help him remove the palladium toxins in his body. Tony's eyes lit up after hearing Zhang Bai's words. Whether it was looking for the Sentinel's things, Zhao Hailun, or removing the palladium toxins, it was all good news for Tony. Then Zhang Bai used the instrument to search for the Sentinel's traces, and ended up locking the Sentinel's location in an ordinary community. While Tony was excited, Zhang Bai looked calm. Although he had found the other party, it was a difficult question whether he would join. Let's go up and visit him. No, he is surrounded by S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. It seems that S.H.I.E.L.D. has found him before us. Or his information is kept secret by S.H.I.E.L.D. Has he joined S.H.I.E.L.D.? What should we do? Maybe we can talk to him. I'm not sure if he has joined S.H.I.E.L.D. How to contact? Didn't I tell you I have Professor X's powers, too? After learning the exact location of the Sentinel, 
Tony was ready to get up and visit, but Zhang Bai shook his head. Through telepathy, he had learned that the people around him were all S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, and there were many Hydra undercovers among them. Tony's face changed instantly when he heard Zhang Bai's words. He didn't expect that S.H.I.E.L.D. would find the Sentinel faster than them. However, Zhang Bai had learned from the memories of S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that they had been here for a long time. Then it can be inferred that S.H.I.E.L.D. had discovered the existence of the Sentinels a long time ago. Zhang Bai was not sure about Tony's question, but it was very likely that they had joined S.H.I.E.L.D. However, Zhang Bai was still prepared to talk to the other party. He knew more than S.H.I.E.L.D. and perhaps he could get the Sentinels to join his side. Tony looked at Zhang Bai with a puzzled look. After all, Zhang Bai just told him not to go there rashly. How can we talk if we don't visit? Zhang Bai innocently told Tony that he had Professor X's telepathy, which shocked Tony. Professor X's telepathy was terrifying. Ignoring Tony's shock, he used his telepathic abilities to contact the Sentinels. Hello, Robert Reynolds, my name is Zhang Bai, maybe you have heard of me. Zhang Bai, psychic abilities, what do you want from me? Are you interested in coming out to chat? I know a way to seal or resolve the void. I'm at a few farms outside of New York. With your abilities, you should be able to find me. It is good. The sentinel on the other side was very surprised after hearing Zhang Bai's voice in his mind, but it was just surprise. He didn't think that the other party could invade his mind and heart. Indeed, Zhang Bai's current ability could not invade the sentinel's mind and heart. Even Professor X couldn't do it. Then he invited the other party to come out and talk, and even threw out a way to seal or solve the void. He believed that the sentinel would definitely appear. After taking back his psychic ability, he directly opened the door of the Illuminati base and waited for the arrival of the sentinel. Tony was a little nervous. He didn't know what Zhang Bai said just now, so he probably had nothing to do with this conversation with the sentinel. If Zhang Bai was good enough, maybe the sentinel could really join the Illuminati. Soon, a figure appeared in front of Zhang Bai and Tony. I'm here. Tell me how to seal or resolve the void. Wait for me a moment, Tom, Jerry, come here. After the sentinel appeared in front of Zhang Bai and Tony, they both felt a terrifying pressure. Facing the sentinel's question, Zhang Bai took out a phone and called. On the other end were Tom and Jerry who were watching TV. After hearing Zhang Bai's words, they didn't need to know the location and came out of the phone directly. My God, what the hell is this? A cat and a mouse came out of the phone. Oh my god, I must be dazzled. Okay Tony, stop making a fuss. Tony looked at Tom on the table and Jerry on Zhang Bai's shoulder with disbelief. The sentry stared at Tom and Jerry for a few seconds and said nothing. He just sat in one of the seats and waited for Zhang Bai to speak. He interrupted Tony and looked at the sentry. Before that, I'm curious if you've ever joined S.H.I.E.L.D. No, I don't like officialdom. Okay. The void is one with you. Unless there is a particularly powerful being that can erase the void, such a being cannot be found for the time being. As for sealing it, the owner of the fragment of Phoenix Force should be able to do it. The Mind Gem and Soul Gem together should also be able to seal the void for a short period of time. The owner of the Phoenix Force fragment is Jean Grey from Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. Her condition is temporarily unstable and she cannot use the Phoenix Force yet. The Mind Gem and the Soul Gem are in the universe and will come to Earth in the near future. Jean will also be able to control the Phoenix Force soon. So, on behalf of the Illuminati, I invite you to join. Tony and I established this organization to protect the Earth and humanity. You should also know about the monsters before. I can tell you that there are a lot of them, and the Earth will face many crises. If you join us, at least you can guarantee that someone will know how to awaken your consciousness if you lose control, right? Before telling the sentinel the method, Zhang Bai asked him if he had joined S.H.I.E.L.D., and after learning that he had not, he began to tell the sentinel what he knew. It was a bit unrealistic to want to solve the void, and he couldn't find such a powerful existence to help the sentinel solve the void. There are two ways to seal it. The Phoenix Force symbolizes the mind and life, so it should be no problem to seal the void. The Mind Stone and the Soul Stone are similar to the existence of rules in the universe, so they should also be able to seal the void for a short time. However, these two methods could not be implemented for the time being. After listening to them, the sentry fell into deep thought and said nothing. 
Zhang Bai directly invited the sentry, and even said that if the sentry lost control, at least someone could know how to awaken his own consciousness. Although Zhang Bai wanted to solve it at first, it was a bit unrealistic. It was still possible to awaken the sentinel's consciousness. At worst, there were still Tom and Jerry. When the time came, they could make something to awaken the sentinel. Zhang Bai believes that the sentinel cannot kill Tom and Jerry, but Tom and Jerry can't do anything to the sentinel either because his strength is too terrifying. Tom and Jerry should be able to do it in the future. They still need to grow up or integrate into this world. By then, Tom and Jerry will be able to compete with the sentinel. The sentry did not immediately accept Zhang Bai's invitation. After hesitating for a long time, he slowly spoke. Okay, normally I won't take action, I need to fight against the void. Of course, under normal circumstances we won't disturb you. Once the host of the Phoenix Force is fully awakened, I will let her help you seal the void. It is good. In the end, the Sentinel agreed to join the Illuminati. In other timelines, the Sentinel had formed an organization with Iron Man, Professor X, Mr. Fantastic, and others. After the Sentinel agreed, he said that he would not take action under normal circumstances, which Zhang Bai and Tony also agreed with. After the Sentinel left, Tony was very excited. He didn't expect the Sentinel to actually join the Illuminati. Zhang Bai was not very excited. He would be more powerful than the Sentinel in the future. However, the Sentinel was alert after leaving. There were many people spying on him with his strength. Since he defeated the monster last time, many people have been looking for him. As for the surveillance of S.H.I.E.L.D., how could he not know? He just didn't care. As for joining the Illuminati, he didn't feel anything. After all, it was to protect the Earth and mankind, but that person knew much more than S.H.I.E.L.D. What's more, it was not an official organization, so he was not so resistant. Nick Fury, the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., had also invited him, using nothing more than some morality and justice. Possessing the power of a million stars, his brain was not much worse than Nick Fury's. He could see through the other party's intention at a glance, and he was already very disgusted with the officialdom. Naturally, it was impossible for him to join. Although Nick Fury was helpless about this, he had no choice but to send agents disguised as residents to monitor him, not knowing that all his actions were in the sight of others. If the Sentinels hadn't cared, Nick Fury's head would have been moved. Zhang, what's up with your two pets? Animals with superpowers? Nothing. You should find Bruce Banner's location as soon as possible, and invite Zhao Helen to join us. You also need to invite Professor X. Well, to be honest, it feels like I'm the one doing the work. Didn't I invite the Sentinel to join us just now? Then I'll go with you to invite Professor X. Tony looked at Tom and Jerry curiously and asked, but Zhang Bai didn't intend to answer him. He changed the subject and asked Tony to find Banner's location quickly and invite Zhao Helen to come in. There are only three Illuminati members now, which is far from enough. Hearing Zhang Bai's words, Tony looked at Zhang Bai with resentment and said that he had been doing the work from the beginning, and Zhang Bai was lying in the manor every day like a master. In response to Tony's complaints, he directly used his credit for inviting the Sentinels to join in to shut him up, and now Tony really couldn't say anything. After leaving the Illuminati base and returning to the villa, he said to Tom and Jerry, Can you two help me make something that can remove toxins from my body? There's a reward for doing it well. He told Tom and Jerry what he wanted to make. After hearing that there was a reward, they nodded and disappeared from Zhang Bai's sight. They ran back to their room and started tinkering. This thing was prepared for Tony. On the other side, Banner has arrived in New York and sneaked into his former laboratory to look for the data of the original experiment, but he found nothing. He thought he was taken away by the military, and when he was about to leave, he saw his girlfriend Betty leaving the university with a man's hand. He saw this scene and felt pain in his heart. He sighed and walked outside, and came to a pizza shop that he was very familiar with. Because the owner was his former elder, he was very surprised to see Banner. Bruce, you're finally back. I thought something happened to you after not contacting you for so long. By the way, did you go to see Betty? No, I saw her holding the hand of another person. Um, yes, she brought him to me for a consultation. He seemed to be a psychiatrist, ah. It's okay, I'll be leaving soon, don't tell him I've been back. 
The old man looked at Banner in surprise, but a trace of regret flashed in his eyes when he thought of his girlfriend. Then Banner told him that he saw Betty holding another man's hand. The pizza shop owner nodded and told Banner what he knew. After learning that the other party was a psychologist, Banner silently blessed them in his heart. He could not bring happiness to Betty in this situation. It would be better to let the relationship fade away with time. At this time, Betty brought her new boyfriend to the pizza shop. The shop owner in the back kitchen smiled helplessly and went out to entertain them. Banner looked at Betty quietly through the window. At this time, Betty suddenly noticed something and looked in the direction of the back kitchen. Banner naturally hid immediately, then picked up his backpack and quietly left from the back. Bruce, Bruce where are you? He's back, right, I think I saw him just now. This, Betty was sure that she had not seen it wrong, and she was so excited that she wanted to go to the kitchen and ask the owner directly. But he had promised Bruce not to tell Betty, but in his heart he hoped that Bruce and Betty could get back together. His hesitation made Betty rush to the kitchen immediately. But she didn't see Bruce Banner. After noticing the back door was open, she rushed out again, only to find that there was no one around. Little did she know that Bruce Banner was hiding behind the trash can next to him. When Betty entered the back door, he left directly from the other direction. Suddenly, there was thunder and lightning in the sky, and heavy rain poured down. Banner walked alone on the road in the rain. He was thinking of Betty in his heart. After taking a deep breath, he cheered up and walked forward. But the next moment, a car blocked his way, and a blonde and blue-eyed intellectual beauty came out of it. She ran towards Banner regardless of everything, and the next moment the two hugged each other and started kissing in the rain. Then Betty took Banner home. Banner also got the data of the previous experiment from Betty, and he immediately decided to find Mr. Blue, that is, Samuel Stern. He wanted to solve his problem through him. After he told Betty this idea, Betty resolutely prepared to follow Banner to find Mr. Blue. But he had to contact Mr. Blue through his special account first. Army Base Ross brought Bronsky to a sealed laboratory and looked at the equipment in front of them. One of the super serums had a sign that said Stark Industries. But it looked a bit old, so it was probably the super serum that Howard Stark had studied. The formula of the super serum was deduced from Captain America's blood, but now that this place is blocked, it seems that it has not been successful. But there should be some results. Howard Stark originally had two original super serums, and it was for this reason that he was killed and the serum was intercepted by the Winter Soldier sent by Hydra. You want to know why Bruce Banner is so powerful, because he is an accidental creation. We can't create another one. If you want to become stronger, then you can only inject these incomplete super serums, which can only improve your physical fitness a lot. Because it's incomplete, it needs to be injected into the bone marrow. The process will be very painful. Are you sure you want to get the injection? If you can't bear it, you may die here. Please give me the injection, General. I must defeat the Hulk. I want to be stronger than him. Okay, give him the injection. Ross looked at Bronsky and told him seriously why Bruce Banner became like that. At the same time, he opened the container in front of him, revealing rows of things filled with super serum. Finally, he carefully asked Bronsky again whether he wanted to be injected. Hearing Ross's words, Bronsky's answered firmly, and finally Ross signaled the researchers next to him to inject Bronsky with the super serum. He didn't expect that Bronsky would not waver even when faced with the bone marrow injection. Afterwards, Bronsky lay on a special experimental bed with his back facing up, and then the researchers used belts and handcuffs to tie Bronsky to the experimental bed. This was to prevent Bronsky from moving around during the injection, or from going crazy after the injection. Banner brought Betty to the academy, logged into his special account through the academy's computer, and then contacted Mr. Blue. After obtaining the other party's location and reservation, he took Betty to leave. What he didn't know was that he had been discovered by the military when he contacted Mr. Blue. At this moment, the army was on the way. Not long after, several armored vehicles rushed into the academy. Banner saw this scene and ran away directly, without any thought of Betty. Her father is Ross, no one will hurt her. If she followed him, she might be hurt, so after running into an open-air library, Banner, knowing that he could not escape, swallowed the USB flash drive that stored his experimental data, and a team of soldiers blocked the entire library. 
Then he started to shoot hypnotic gas into it, and the next second a green giant broke through the wall of the library and appeared in everyone's sight. Then he jumped on the armored vehicle, but the armored vehicle could not withstand Hulk's jump and was crushed in an instant, and the soldiers inside died instantly. Boom, boom, all the soldiers started shooting at Hulk, and the machine guns on the armored vehicles even suppressed Hulk for a short time. Soon, even the tanks entered the academy and began to attack Hulk. A shell hit Hulk, and the terrifying power blew Hulk away. Then there was a continuous bombing, and many soldiers attacked Hulk with RPGs. In a short period of time, Hulk was completely suppressed by the military's weapons. When Hulk stood up, he found his target and jumped hard, stepping hard on a tank. Then he tore off the entire barrel of the tank and used it as a weapon to smash the wreckage of the tank under him. He didn't let him go until the tank was smashed into a discus, and then he swung the barrel in his hand, hitting another tank, bending the barrel of that tank, so that it could no longer fire shells. Boom, soon after, more and more soldiers and armored vehicles appeared, and various weapons continuously attacked Hulk. Not only tanks, but even armed helicopters were dispatched. Ross was determined to capture Hulk here. Even he himself came to the academy in an amphibious armored vehicle. Bronski even rushed into the battlefield in a military jeep, holding a grenade launcher and began to attack Hulk. He was extremely confident after being injected with super serum, and he firmly believed that he could be on par with Hulk. He also kept provoking Hulk. Boom, the helicopter gunship began to attack Hulk with machine guns. With the suppression of firepower from the ground troops, Hulk's anger continued to rise, and then his body grew larger again. He stared at the helicopter gunship in the sky. Roar, with a roar, he bent his legs slightly, leapt up, and instantly reached the same height as the helicopter, grabbed the helicopter's landing gear, and fiercely pulled it to the ground. Because there was a helicopter next to Hulk, the ground troops stopped firing. Otherwise, it won't be Hulk who destroys the helicopter, but themselves. The pilot saw Hulk trying to destroy the helicopter, so he quickly controlled the helicopter to take off, and then began to spin, trying to throw Hulk out. But Hulk's strength was not much weaker than the helicopter, he held on to the helicopter tightly and punched the helicopter's propeller, which was destroyed instantly, and then the entire helicopter began to fall to the ground. Boom, there was a loud bang, and the helicopter was blown into wreckage. Hulk climbed out of the wreckage, staring at the tanks and armored vehicles that kept attacking him. After Hulk appeared, all the soldiers started to attack again, and the tanks aimed at Hulk again, without any hesitation, and fired shells instantly. Hulk was blown away by the tank again. Although he was blown away, he was not injured at all, not even a wound appeared on his body. Bronski was even more confident in using the howitzer to chase Hulk and attack him. Because of the serum injection, his physical fitness was far superior to that of ordinary soldiers. After the howitzer was finished, he came in front of Hulk, and then took out the small pistol on his waist to attack Hulk. This directly angered Hulk, and when he was about to chase Bronski, a shell hit him, and Hulk directly used his body to block it. Bronski, led it into the range of the sonic weapon. Yes, General, at this time, two special armored vehicles appeared again. There was an infrasonic transmitter on each of them, which was similar to the one used by Obadiah, but with greater power. Ross also bought this from Tony, because Stark Industries had closed its weapons manufacturing department a long time ago. So it cost Tony a favor to make it for him, just to use it against the Hulk. After the Hulk took the cannonball, he started chasing Bronski, leading him into the attack range of the sonic weapon, and finally Bronski made a great leap. Buzz. The sonic weapon was activated, and two invisible ripple-like sonic weapons instantly enveloped Hulk's body. Even Hulk felt unbearable pain after being attacked by the sonic weapon. Even Bronski was affected by the sonic weapon just now. His two ears had begun to bleed, but he didn't care at all, and looked at Hulk with a fanatical and crazy look. At this time, Hulk tore two pieces of iron wreckage from the wreckage of the armored vehicle next to him and threw them at the two armored vehicles with sonic weapons. The two sonic weapons were destroyed in an instant. General Ross looked very ugly when he saw this scene. He didn't expect that Hulk could actually destroy sonic weapons. He could still move under the sonic attack of sonic weapons, but Hulk's strength made him more fascinated and satisfied. Betty, who saw Hulk being attacked by the army, came to an amphibious armored vehicle. Let him go, he's Bruce. 
Dad, impossible, he is military property. Get her away from here. If anything happens to Bruce, I will never forgive you in my life. As Betty finished speaking, Ross came out of the amphibious armored vehicle and answered Betty with a serious face. Then he waved to the two soldiers next to him. Then they grabbed Betty's arm and walked back, asking her to leave this place. Betty looked at Ross's determined eyes and shouted at Ross in despair. Ross was not moved at all, but the female officer next to him glanced at Ross. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.